from Carter Finley Stadium on the campus of North Carolina State University in Raleigh, the 14th meeting of the Wolf Pack of NC State and the Pirates of East Carolina. There's an overflow crowd here in Carter Finley Stadium tonight. They think it will probably be the largest crowd to ever see a football game in the state of North Carolina. Hi, everybody. It's Bob Neal along with Tim Foley. Very happy to be back with you for our second season of primetime college football. Last week, East Carolina went down to Tallahassee, Florida, gave Florida State a scare before losing. 47 to 46 and they are the talk of the state of North Carolina but here in Raleigh there's optimism to a brand new coach by the name of Tom Reed and Tom Reed we spent some time with him Tim what are your feelings as he debuts here at an ACC school well Tom Reed is a real disciplinarian out of the Woody Hayes Bo Schembechler mode mold I talked to him the other day and he'd been working out at three three o'clock in the morning uh, he's a real emotional intense leader but He's going to need more than emotion tonight because he's got some inexperience at some critical positions. Quarterback, the secondary, he's got three new people, and even his punter is untested. Well, one thing's for sure, there is a big difference in the personalities of these two coaches. Ed Emery's the head man at East Carolina. He's been there three years, striving to build national recognition. He got a lot of that with the scare into Florida State last week. One thing is for certain, this game, in particularly, is a very important game for the East Carolina Pirates. I have no trouble getting myself or anybody that got red blood in them from eastern North Carolina ready to play NC State. And well, they have lured us in here tonight with being kind to us and saying nice things about us and, and being uh, low-key about their football team. They got a great football team. And the teams are about ready to come onto the field here at Carter Fenley Stadium. As I say, they're everywhere. Here's East Carolina. 47-46 losers. They're 0-1, but you'd think this team won as emotional as they've been, Tim. There's no question about it. 46 points against the uh, top-ranked team like Florida State. I talked to Jack Stanton, who's the defensive coordinator at uh, Florida State, and asked him about their offense. And he said that they, before the game, they'd read that they were big, strong, and fast. And he said uh, after the game, he, he wanted to assure me that that was all true. All the good things said about him were true. The balloons are released. The NC State Wolfpack with brand new uniform design under Tom Reed have come onto the field here at Carter Finley. You can see they're hanging out of the rafters. Over 56,000 people and they're raring to go. It's a backyard brawl in North Carolina. We'll have the kickoff in a moment. The sun brings out all kinds of people, and they all want a beer that won't slow them down. Turn it loose, turn it loose, turn it loose tonight. Coors Light, Coors Light, turn it loose tonight. Don't hold back, don't hold back, turn it loose tonight. Beer after beer when you're moving around. Coors Light is the one that won't slow you down. Coors Light, turn it loose tonight. Chevy Tough is taking charge with Chevy S10 Maxi Cab. There's never been an extended cab pickup like it before. You can't even get one in a Ford Ranger or Toyota. Taking charge of people space, Maxi Cab with available rear jump seats has behind the seat room Dotson King Cab Cab Match. Taking charge with up to 40% more cab load space than Dotson King Cab. Now choose 10.9% financing or $300 cash back on new 83 S10 pickups and Maxi Cabs. Chevy Tough is taking charge. The coin toss took place just while we were broken away there, and in a moment the teams will come onto the field. East Carolina won the coin toss, elected to make their decision on whether to kick, receive, or defend a goal here in the first half. Therefore, they have decided to receive the football, and East Carolina will be on offense as we begin this game here tonight. We talk about this being played on the campus in Raleigh. Greenville, North Carolina, the location of East Carolina University, is only 87 miles from Raleigh. A lot of folks travel over for this game. It is tremendous rivalry. This is the 14th meeting. NC State leads in the rivalry 10-3, narrowly beat East Carolina 33-26 last year. So on one end zone to the right of your screen, you You'll be seeing a lot of shots of fans under a scoreboard. They are not in seats. They are just sitting on grass. They're hanging out of the rafters, and they expect this to be the largest crowd ever to witness a football game in the state of North Carolina. This game in the newspaper today was promoted as the game. The newspaper here in Raleigh said it's bigger than when NC State plays North Carolina. 
Of course, North Carolina does not play East Carolina. Uh, a bone of contention to East Carolina coach Ed Emery as he fights and uh, struggles for national recognition. They are an independent Southern football team, play a very difficult schedule, and are a high-powered offense. They run the option I, and that's what we'll see when they receive the kickoff. The two deep men are Henry Williams, number 15, and Jimmy Walden, number 36. They line up in the eye because Henry Williams, who now splits over to the left side, had a kickoff return of 99 yards against Florida State last week. Mike Cooper kicks it off. This game is underway. It's going to bounce to Jimmy Walden across the 10, to the 20, and to the 22, and Mary is down. The first hit of the game made by Maurice Barnes of NC State. Let's meet the backfield now for East Carolina. First of all, their quarterback is Kevin Ingram. He had 138 yards passing and 124 running last week. Ernest Biner, tough, good blocking fullback. The tailback in the option eye is Tony Baker. Average 6.6 .6 yards a carry last year. First down 10, East Carolina Pirates from the 21-yard line of East Carolina. That's Biner. You can see how well they block out to the 36-yard line. And we've got a first down on the opening play from the line of scrimmage. Now let's meet the receivers for the East Carolina Pirates. First of all, Ricky Nichols. He's a junior, 5'10", 180. He'll be playing at Flanker. Stephon Adams, 5'10", 195, also a junior. And Norwood Van, the tight end, very active in this East Carolina offense. First down, 10 Pirates from the 35. They're going from the south to the north on the field here at Carter Finley. Out across the 34 goes fullback Ernest Biner before he's brought down by the defensive unit of NC State. Raymond Phillips, the right tackle, made the stop. Here's a look at the offensive line for East Carolina now. Very excellent, Tim Foley. They've got some big fellas in there. Terry Long, you see there at left guard, is one of the, one of the strongest men in the world. Six feet, and uh, he, was, he just weighs a bunch. I think he deadlifts 830 pounds, and squats almost that much on a second and seven keeper here's Ingram he's so dangerous on this play he has great speed as you see Kevin Ingram is knocked out of bounds at the 49 yard line of North Carolina State it was free safety Dwayne Green who came up Ingram had 124 yards rushing against Florida State last week and this is the essence of the option they call it a freeze option and we'll talk about that a little bit later on North Carolina State is mostly concerned with protecting the perimeter of the defense. Ingram can really hurt you. He's a big play kind of fellow, and as a result, Binder's going to get a little bit of room up the middle. It'll be first down 10. Double tight ends in there. Rolling to the right. He can throw here and does. Looking for Nichols at the 37-yard line. Incomplete. For Ingram, that was a 13-yard run previously that got it inside NC State territory, and the question mark Many of the question marks for NC State is the defensive unit. And let's take a look at who will be playing there. The defensive tackle, middle guard, and defensive tackle are Hicks and uh, Blackwell and Phillips. Their strong points are their linebackers on the inside. They are Johnson and Hendel. There's the defensive backfield. Dwayne Green, Don Wilson, the leaders back there for NC State. Now Jimmy Walden in a tailback. Minor remains at the fullback position on a second down 10 from the 49. It goes to Walden, the tailback. He gets to the 35, uh, the 45, and just inside the 45, and stopped there by the NC State defensive unit. There's a look at that defensive team. Uh, we talk about number 33, Vaughn Johnson, and number 54, Hendel. They are the middle linebackers, Tim, and the key to their defensive success. No, there's no question about that. And uh, both of them will go in first or second round of the NFL draft. Both agile, and they get around, and they're both have, they both have a lot of leadership ability, Bob. Third down six, double tight ends. Ingram on the option. Turns it upfield. Doesn't get the first down. He's going to be up a yard or two short on the third down and six. Daryl Harris, the outside linebacker, a six-foot-tall senior, made the stop. You see a lot of red and white in the stands here at Carter-Finley Stadium, but in other locations around the area, you'll see the gold of East Carolina. There is Ed Emery in his fourth year at East Carolina, and he has East Carolina blood in his veins. Runs, runs purple and gold. He played for East Carolina. And here is the first punt of the East Carolina season. They punted not one time against FSU last week. Don Wilson is the safety for NC State. 
Good punt by Bolts. It's going to go into the end zone for a touchback, though. Wilson does not have an opportunity to return it. And NC State will come out to their own 20-yard line after the touchback to go on offense. And uh, one of the few times in this young season that East Carolina's offensive unit has been stopped. Let's meet the offensive unit now for the North Carolina State Wolfpack. Tim Esposito. He played at Long Beach City College, has never played a snap of ball in varsity. Vince Evans is a very good fullback, former tailback. Here's their star, Joe McIntosh. He's lightning quick. He plays the tailback position. He broke Ted Brown's freshman rushing record here at NC State two years ago. Hampered by injuries last year. He's healthy this year. On a first and ten, Esposito's going to put it in the air. Medium distance pass. It's complete out to the 35-yard line to Phil Brothers, the flanker, the sophomore from Virginia Beach. Number 19 is Phil Brothers. And now let's take a look at the receivers for NC State. There's Phil, the man who just caught the pass. Phil Brothers is a former quarterback, runs a 4-6-40. Stanley Davis just became eligible to play and was activated just yesterday. And the tight end who will be very active in this passing offense, he's a sophomore, 6 feet, 215 pounds, Jeff Brown. First and 10 from the 35. This is vanilla I formation that you'll see run by NC State. There's that very good tailback, Joe McIntosh. He's gained over 2,000 yards in two years as a player here at State. Let's look at the offensive line now for NC State. A question mark here, Tim. Dean Shavlik has uh, had a problem with an impacted tooth all week long. He hasn't practiced much in... Uh, I think he's he's in there now. He's trying to play. He's lost about 12 pounds, and he's he's one of the leaders in their football team. I know they were concerned about that. 11-18 to go. Quarter number one. Scoreless game. Second down six. NC State. Esposito about to throw his second pass in major college football, and he completes his second pass. He's two out of two. It's Mike Miller, the tailback, who will be rotating with McIntosh. So Esposito, two out of two now. And it's going to be around 26, 27 yards in passing already. Let's have a look at the defensive unit for East Carolina. Jeff Pegues, Al Stevens, Jerry Rogers, Steve Hamilton. Hamilton, a man they think will be a high draft choice in the pros. The linebackers are Grant and Jordan, also very key members of that defensive unit. And the defensive backfield in the state, McIntosh. Getting some running room. And NC State moving the ball inside East Carolina territory. Hal Stevens made the tackle. Tim, we were wondering if NC State was going to be effective with a ball control ground game, and it's looking that way early. Well, they need to, and they also are doing the right thing. Uh, Coach Reed talked about getting Esposito, building his confidence a little bit by letting him sh throw a few short passes, and he hit Brothers on about a 10-yarder and then dink one to Miller for five yards. So you, you know that in his first start, Esposito's got to be a little shaky. And off to the fullback. Close to a first down, about two yards short to the 45-yard line of East Carolina. That was McIntosh, I think, who carried the ball. And he's short by, let's call it, a yard and a half. And somewhere in that conglomeration of coaches is head coach for NC State, Tom Reed. There you see him. He has on the white shirt and the headset, has his right hand on the mouthpiece. First year, he came from Miami of Ohio. He came from the cradle of coaches, some great ones. They're in their power offense, wishbone formation, double tight ends. It's third down, and let's call it two from the 45-yard line. Ram it off left guard, Vince Evans. It looks to here from here as though he got the first down. NC State keeps their drive alive. This is the only time that you'll see NC State coming out of the eye formation. In short yardage situations and goal line, they'll go to the power eye and they'll just blow straight ahead, lead those two backs up into the hole, trying to clean out the linebackers, give Evans a little bit of room. Evans, a former tailback, had uh, torn ligament in the 82 opener, so this is his first action since the first game of last year. Esposito on a first and 10 from the 42. It's complete the 34 and out of bounds just inside the 34 yard line to Phil Brothers. Two big catches for the flanker who's playing in place by the way of the injured Ricky Wall the man who normally starts in that position. Well as you mentioned uh, earlier on Bob he's got some inexperienced receivers to throw to. Brothers does a nice job here he was covered early and uh, as Esposito began to scramble he worked his way back toward the quarterback and worked his way open. Second down short yardage. You see that pre-snap movement on the part of NC State, hoping to confuse the Pirate defensive unit. Second down two. Here's the handoff to McIntosh. Good move outside. And McIntosh gets inside the 25. The first down and about six more yards. 
but probably spotted at the 24-yard line. And NC State very impressive with their ball control, off-tackle offense. And just as Tom Reed said, they're keeping it simple and going with things he thinks this team knows how to do. One thing that's important here is if you look at last week's film, you know that East Carolina can move the ball. And one way to keep them from scoring points is to maintain possession of the ball yourself, obviously. First down 10. NC State, a broken play, and Esposito thrown for a big loss with the tackle, number 20, Kenny Phillips. That's his third tackle of this young ball game, number 20, the defensive right end or drop end. Sometimes he plays much like a linebacker or safety, usually a very quick athlete out there, and you can see the broken play here. You have a new coach, a new system, and the first game for North Carolina State, you're going to see a couple of plays like that. It's, in, it's inevitable. One thing I think you ought to look for in this particular area, Bob, is uh, Tom Reed likes to throw it into the end zone. From here. He's going to put the ball up in the air. You may see a takeoff. Esposito's got an open diving attempt at the catch by Ricky Wall, the flanker, who did not start tonight because he's playing hurt. Little play action to the weak side. Wall worked his way down inside the defensive back, broke toward the middle of the field. He had man-to-man -man coverage, almost pulled it in. Are you going to see it from over the top? He was there, he had the ball, and that was that was catchable. It would have been a nice catch, but he had it. Third down 20, Esposito in the pocket. It's complete. And out of bounds goes his receiver, Stanley Davis. They're going to say Davis went out of bounds at the 18-yard line, about four yards short of the first down. Little play action fake to McIntosh. East Carolina State is defending the field, so they let it go back into the sideline. A little quick outside pattern on the sideline, and Davis does a nice job of getting a couple more yards. Here's Mike Kofer in to attempt a field goal, holding his Phil Brothers. Brothers, a former quarterback, could fake. We'll doubt it at this point. 34-yard field goal attempt here. Kofer, who's been hurt all week, kicks as though he's injury-free. And NC State comes up with the first blood in this backyard brawl in Raleigh, North Carolina. A successful drive for NC State all the way down to the 17-yard line where they were completely successful on a 34-yard field goal by Mike Kofer, the sophomore. Sometimes you know who your competition is, even before you run. The one who's willing to push to the limit. For them, Gatorade Thirst Quencher is standard equipment. Because when you give it all you've got, Gatorade helps give it back. Gatorade, it shows you've come to play. Now in Fruit Punch flavor. Come on in, take a seat. We're gonna tell you what the big boys eat. Name is Wheaties Crunchy Wheat. Now you know what the big boys eat. Hello, milk. Come on in. Jump in, berry, have a swim. Wheaties, Wheaties Crunchy Wheat. Now go tell your mama what the big boys eat. Part of your good breakfast. Terrorism and subversion. If these Soviet tactics of conquest are used in America, there will be no place to hide. Sunday on Superstation WTBS. And we're back now for the NC State kickoff with eight minutes remaining in the first quarter. And you hear the crowd applauding for the announcement. I just said this is the largest crowd in the history of North Carolina, the state of North Carolina football. 57,700. There are the two deep backs, Jimmy Walden and Henry. Just call me Hank Williams. There's the kicker who just hit the 34-yard kick field goal, Mike Kofer. Kofer's had tendonitis in his kicking leg, but seems to be okay here tonight. Kicks it on the ground, hoping to avoid that long kickoff return. It's picked up by Williams. He has incredible speed. Williams throws his 5-foot, 8-inch, 163-pound body out there to about the 36-yard line. Tackled by 53, Maurice Barnes, the same man who made the tackle on the opening kickoff. And East Carolina has another opportunity on offense. 
You can tell that North Carolina State is concerned about the special teams. Uh, that, that's one of the ways you defend against that by what they call squibbing the ball down the field, not getting a lot of air, not letting the offensive team really organize a, a successful return. On a first down, NC State back nailing Ingram. One way to stop a great option quarterback is to get him before he has any options, Tim. The East Carolina football team run, runs a freeze option. As you can see as that replay began, the tailback, Baker, stood still for at least a count. And what's he, what he's doing is freezing the linebackers. They're not trying to get the linebackers a read so they can get into a pursuit pattern. It's second down, 12. Yeah. 26 yard line. Yeah. Back yeah. The fullback, Miner. Miner. Forces his way out to the 30-yard line. It's still going to be third down long yardage, a passing situation for most teams. But in this option formation for East Carolina, you never know what's going to happen. Well, every time Ingram touches the ball, it's an option because the kid's got unbelievable feet. Uh, he can hurt you running. But he hurt Florida State throwing the ball, too. They put the ball up in the air 14 times. He completed eight of them for nice games split back formation it still runs just like the option though there goes Ingram turns it up the field. it's only two yards NC State defense did well it was third and eight they get only a couple Andy Hendel the inside linebacker and he got help from the right outside linebacker Daryl Harris number 58 on the play and now after not having to punch up punt all last week Jeff Fulch is going to get two opportunities here his second of the night Don Wilson is back to the seat Reed's heart is beating rapidly at this moment because Don Wilson is his third string man when it comes to receiving punts. It's always an anxious time for, for a head coach when you've got an inexperienced man back there returning punts. But he brings it in. It'll be first down 10 NC State at the 25 yard line of the Wolfpack. We'll be back in a moment. 6.02 to go. Quarter number one, no score. When it comes time to kick up your heels, you want a beer that won't slow you down. Turn it loose, turn it loose, turn it loose tonight. Coors Light, Coors Light, turn it loose tonight. Don't hold back, don't hold back, turn it loose tonight. Coors Light. Beer after beer when you're moving around. Coors Light is the one that won't slow you down. Coors Light. of the National Federation of State High School Associations coordinates interscholastic activities programs for over 20,000 high schools nationwide. Millions of boys and girls benefit from the values of these essential activities, which are inherently educational and enhance classroom performance. The preceding message provided by the NCAA. First down 10 Wolfpack from their own 26. They lead 3 to nothing with 6.02 to go. First quarter of play at Carter Fenley Stadium in Raleigh, North Carolina. Our season opener on TBS Primetime College Football. Hope you're enjoying yourself. Or you may be watching across America. Esposito swings it right side to his fullback. Evans gets it out across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Going to be a gain of about five yards. And now Esposito, playing his first game as a major collegiate quarterback, is five out of six throwing the football for 54 yards already, not a bad start. And the Wolfpack is getting a good mixture on first down, keeping the defense, uh, catching them unaware. Defense, obviously, in first down is uh, more prepared for the run than the pass. We'll call it second down five. Right side hash mark, slot left, high formation. And off to McIntosh, the tailback. He gets the first down, running behind the left guard and left tackle. Larry Burnett's the tackle, 67, and the guard is 56, Greg Steele. Steele, a transfer from defense to offense, and a pretty good left side of the offensive line, Tim. Well, one of the leaders over there is Greg Steele. He is 
spent two years on the defensive line. This year, they felt like they needed some assistance in the offensive line. He opens a nice hole here along with Ron Kozer. Tailback rifles up through there. First down for NC State. That's their fifth first down of the night. Double tight ends in there now. In motion, number six, Chris Cook. Off to the right side is Ricky Isom. He splits time at fullback with Vince Evans. Isom is number 41. McIntosh has a superstar ability, Bob. He rushed for over, well, right at 1,200 yards his rookie season in the ACC. And last year, he was hampered most of the year by injuries. And as a result, wasn't quite as productive. But I know in, in talking to him, he's anticipating a great year. Number 43, Joe Mack, they call him on the campus. ACC Rookie of the Year in 81. He's had 12 100-yard games. Second down eight from the 39-yard line of the Wolfpack team. Three nothing, first quarter action. Esposito on an end around to Brothers, but Brothers breaks the tackle. Still is going to lose yards. Clint Harris, the best defensive player on the East Carolina team, number 48. The free safety was the man who made the tackle back in the backfield. You like to get the defense concerned, concerned about flowing to the ball and hit him with a play like this, reverse. But they happen to run right into a weak safety blitz. One of the fortunes of war. Clint Harris did not start in this game tonight because he had a slight concussion in the game against FSU, but he was honorable mention All-American last year. Third down 11 from the 35. Esposito hit from behind. Coming around from the right side. The play made by Jeff Pegues, the defensive left end, the 235-pound senior from Laurenburg, North Carolina, number 84. Watch him come from the top of your screen. Well, he played opposite their great linebacker, Jody Schultz, who's with the uh, Philadelphia Eagles for a couple of years, and he's got real good acceleration off the ball, and he uses his hands real well to get around the offensive lineman. Henry Williams back to take the punt, the first punt of the game for Marty Martinez. Williams had a 56-yard touchdown return last week. If he can get outside, he's got speed. He broke that tackle. Good pursuit on the part of NC State. There is a penalty marker on the field, I believe. Possibly not. The ball is out of bounds about the 33-yard line. Scratch that. No penalty marker. Henry Williams doesn't get a real good return there. With 2.57 to go in this first quarter of play, NC State leading Eastern Carolina by a score of 3 to nothing on a 34-yard field goal. We'll be back in a moment when the Pirates go on the village for East Carolina. At over 10 feet tall and close to 2,000 pounds, He's more adventure than most men are looking for. Kodiak, the biggest bear of all. Kodiak, a new adventure in smokeless tobacco. Its special moist cut and fresh wintergreen flavored tobacco give you a bold, exciting new taste. Kodiak, it's a new adventure in smokeless tobacco. Commodore 64K memory, at a price that will put a computer in every home, business, and school years before anyone ever dreamed. I adore my 64, my Commodore 64. As we said right before, we thought there had been a penalty marker down, and I think it's on a late hit out of bounds. Let's take a look at it, Tim. Maybe it right there. Number 41, Ricky Isom may have been also there was number 96, Benny Pegram. The penalty moves the ball way upfield for East Carolina. Slammed down from behind is Ingram after he gets three or four yards. Vaughn Johnson is the man who grabbed him and threw him very hard to the turf, and I believe there's a yellow flag down. Just on the other side of the ball. That, that may be his head on the ground up there, Bob. Ingram takes it on the option. Who is it? Johnson gets a piece of his face mask, I think, and that's what they're calling. Vaughn Johnson's third tackle of the game. He's very active, very aggressive, mean football player, a little too mean that time. Here's Robert Carpenter, the referee. Grasping the face mask and pulling 15 yards on the red. You know, that's not something that's intentional. You're, 
blood's running high, and you get in there and you just grab anything you can get, and that's, that's spoken like a true defensive outstanding player. Well, you know me. Player. You know me. <laughs> There is no pass interference. <laughs> first down 10 or face mask. Uh, there is in the eyes of the official this time. First and 10 East Carolina. And they're getting the ball moved downfield. 30 yards of their offensive attack coming via penalty here. Jimmy Walden, the pass receiver, out of the tailback position now. They mark the ball at the 28-and-a-half-yard line of NC State. And Ed Emery seeing his Pirates get down. You know, the, the Pirates have been so pumped up after last week's game and also after knowing that this game is going to be on our national telecast tonight that they may have been just a little bit too pumped, possibly, Tim. I, I think that their response to uh, to the loss is almost like a big win. To score that many points on a nationally ranked football team gives you gives you a feeling of pride. And obviously, this North Carolina State football team isn't the same caliber of FSU, although they're playing with a lot of intensity. Ernest Biner gets the first down on the second down and five, tripped up by Don Wilson. And the Pirates a happy man. By the way, speaking of mascots, a new rule this year. The officials are in control in terms of penalty situations to teams on anything that a mascot, band member, or cheerleader does regarding either unsportsmanlike conduct or coming on the field. So if a mascot became overzealous and ran onto the field, the team of the mascot could be penalized. New rule in NCAA football this year. First and ten from the 18. Ingram keeping it. Tosses just at the right moment. And he was very fortunate that they were near the far side boundary. The toss attempt to Jimmy Walden went out of bounds, and there's going to be a substantial loss on the play. Back to the 27-yard line. So it'll be second down and about 14 yards to go. Always one of the choices on the option. Leave the ball on the ground. And unfortunately, that happens every once in a while. Loney was blitzing from his cornerback position, took away the pitch, and Ingram was being tackled, tried to get, tried to get it back to him anyway. Well, let's call it second down, 15. Line of scrimmage at the 23-yard line. Walden with the handoff from the tailback position inside the 20 to the 18. One of the things that you always have to be conscious of, and coaches talk about all the time, I know Shula stressed it a lot, uh, he wanted reckless abandon. And he wanted intensity, and he wanted aggressive football players, but he wanted poised aggression. Uh, they've, they've, that, that, sounds, that sounds strange, but... In other words, use your head. I mean, if the guy's out of bounds, don't hit him. And if it's a choice of grabbing a face mask, you're not grabbing it, don't grab it. Third down nine from the 18. Single setback. They have the fullback over in the slot. Ingram rolling, looking into the front row. Complete. Ball is loose, falling on in the end zone. And they're signaling touchdown. They say the receiver caught it. And that East Carolina fell on it in the North Carolina State end zone for a touchdown for the East Carolina Pirates. The man who caught the pass was 14, Stephon Adams. The man who fell on it for the touchdown was Norman Van, the tight end. And East Carolina takes a 6-3 lead. We're going to see this again. Ing Ingram takes the ball, rolls to his right, and rolls back to the weak side. He's got Stephon coming in on a uh, curl pattern. He makes, he makes the catch. Loney comes up, gives him a shot. Green is there, knocks the ball loose. It's a fumble, and Van recovers for the touchdown. Norman Van, the senior from Magnolia. Here's the point after by Jeff Keith. And with 1.17 to go in quarter number one, the East Carolina Pirates have taken a 7-3 lead in the backyard brawl here in Raleigh. You saw the sea of yellow. There are about 20,000 East Carolina fans in the 57,700 in attendance tonight. Chevy Top is taking charge. And talk about tough. This stock Chevy S10 took on the Baja 1000, the most grueling off-road event on the continent. It was a totally stock pickup with guts enough to start and finish. And at the Baja, to finish is to win. Now, choose 10.9% financing or $300 cash back on new 83 S10 pickups and maxi cabs. Chevy Top is taking charge. A fine wine is a perfect balancing of taste. So is a fine dinner. New Le Menu. Each Le Menu has three carefully orchestrated foods, like beef sirloin tips in mushroom and wine gravy, seasoned O'Brien potatoes, and broccoli with cheddar cheese sauce. Le Menu frozen dinners from Swanson. So extraordinary, you'd dare serve them with a vintage wine. 
there's a man in their ranks who's about to get away with murder. Omar Sharif, Peter O'Toole, Night of the Generals, Sunday on Superstation WTBS. You want to see exciting football? I'm sure they drew this one up on the blackboard, Tim. No question about it. Right now, Art Baker is uh, thanking his lucky stars and Tom Batta, the defensive coordinator for the Wolf Pack, is saying, what do I have to do right? That was a drive that was assisted by 30 yards and penalty penalties and then a fumble that was recovered in the end zone. Almost half the distance. It was a 67-yard drive in six plays. As you say, in 30 yards of those 67, to take a look at it there, came via the penalty route. And the Pirates' offense is good enough where they don't need any help. Joe Green and Mike Miller are back. Green is 25, Miller's 42. It won't matter who's back, though, as the ball is touched down in the end zone. It went to Joe Green, and it'll be first and 10 NC State out at their own 20-yard line after the touchback. You know, it's about time that the, uh, the colleges respond to the kickoff the same way the pros did. In professional football, they move the ball back to the 35 so they can get some excitement back into the kickoff. Most of the college athletes now can, can kick it into the end zone, and you see the ball down. And the fans come to see people run and get tackled and catch the ball and throw the ball and, and I, I think that uh, hopefully they'll they'll get onto that rule soon I think there may be some problem with the clock here it's been at a minute 17 for a long time official timeout down there on the field East Carolina leading by a score of seven to three with 117 on the scoreboard clock here at the south end of the field at Carter Finley Stadium I am not sure if that's correct or not We'll probably have an announcement about that. That's Robert Carpenter. I, by the way, I spent quite a bit of time chat chatting with the ACC official here tonight, Carpenter, about new rules changes in college football this year. We'll be going over them with you. He explained them very carefully to me, and I'll do likewise. There's an update. Boston College, 24-16, leading Clemson. A minor upset. Our producer, by the way, Mike Lardner, a former Eagle, uh, who wears it proudly on his anatomy. There's the second score of the evening. Auburn leading Southern Miss at the half, 14-3. Lardner had that one picked all the way, didn't he, Big Bob? <laughs> uh, if he had it his way, he'd make Boston College America's team. Anyway, the Eagles are leading right now. And uh, a possible upset if they beat Clemson. Clemson, a very powerful ACC team. But that game's far from over 24-16. Here's Esposito on a first and 10 from his 20. Throwing that medium distant pass he likes so well, it's popped into the air as the defender popped the intended receiver, number 19, Brothers. Five out of seven now is Esposito for 54 yards and doing himself, uh, I think, uh, proud here. He seems to be very poised, Tim, for his first big-time college game. This is his first big-time college game, but there's a lot of quarterbacks that step in and do a good job. He threw for over 3,200 yards in junior college. It's not like you have, you have to explain to him what the ball is. I said Carolina, Jun uh, California, junior college looks pretty tough. Just ask the people who used to have to try to tackle O.J. Zimpson, who is a product of it. 42 Mike Miller getting outside going for the first down marker and out of bounds at the 32 yard line of NC State. He's chased out over there by Rally Caparis, the right cornerback. That's number 42 Mike Miller, a sophomore from Greensboro. He averaged 5.1 yards a carry last year. One of the advantages of the I formation, the offensive lineman's job is just make contact and get some movement, either to the strong side or the weak side. It doesn't make any difference. If you get some movement, it creates a hole. That time Miller took it all the way back against the grain. Six first downs now for NC State. They're trailing 7-3, one minute left in this quarter, and penalty markers go down. Some kind of movement before the ball, either offensively or defensively. We'll check on that in just a moment. This is illegal procedure against the offense. By the way, there is a new penalty this year, except this, I'm sure, is not going to be it. We'll get the announcement here, and I'll, I'll make mention of that. Dead ball, illegal procedure, red. Could have been not enough people up on the line or something, but there is a new offensive encroachment penalty this year that can be a dead ball foul. An offensive lineman can move into that zone now and be called for encroachment before the ball is snapped. It'll be signaled as an offsides penalty if it comes up during the night. There's the handoff to number 44, Vince Evans, the fullback. He's a tough one, but he gets a couple of very, very hard-earned yards out to the 35-yard line. It was Great. Clint Harris who made the tackle. Excuse me. Great leg drive, great body lean. Uh, with, the, with the position of his body, he keep, kept people off his legs and just kept moving those feet, bouncing, bouncing along the line until he found a soft spot and 
Stuck it up in there. A little more than five yards of pop for Vince here so far tonight. We're down to the closing seconds now, quarter number one. Maple, they'll get more young athletes wanting to be linemen now that they can encroach, you know? <laughs> it's a new thing for linemen to do. Esposito throwing to the left side, incomplete. Out at the 43-yard line, going right for the flag there. And there's a penalty marker over on the sideline. If I'm a receiver for NC State, one thing I don't want to do is have to go into the East Carolina bench area uh, to catch the ball. We'll get the penalty in a moment. It was Brothers, the intended receiver, Adams, was covering on the play. Most of the players on both teams are from Carolina, and I'll tell you, there's bad blood here. Personal foul, East Carolina. I think it's on Calvin Adams, number five, the right corner, from High Point, North Carolina. Phil Brothers is from way out of state. He's from Virginia Beach, Virginia. So these are all youngsters who played against each other in Carolina, Virginia high schools. They know who they are. They're 87 miles apart. Red ball, personal foul, why? First penalty, by the way, against East Carolina tonight. I think the, the officials are concerned about the emotional level of this game, and because that didn't really seem too bad to me. <laughs> they may be calling them a little tight. There's your defensive explanation again. I always like it. It looked like really tough to me. That's number 42, Mike Miller, who gets inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. I just kid you, Tim, from your defensive days. You do just have a little bit of that blood, I guess, that stays in you forever, doesn't it? Five seconds, four seconds, three, and we're counting down to the end of the first quarter, I'm happy to say. So Tim doesn't have an opportunity to respond to that query. We'll be back in just a moment. East Carolina University leading NC State at the end of one quarter by a score of seven to three. Stay with us. We've got a good one on our hands here tonight. When Apple invented the personal computer, we were all alone in the world. But soon it seemed that everybody was trying to build a better Apple. Well, somebody finally did. Lisa from Apple. So advanced it puts us right back where we started. Alone again. Soon there'll be just two kinds of people. Those who use computers and those who use apples. A lot of good old boys around here know the best places to hunt and fish. Places that are hard to get to and get through and get around. That's why they got the original. The Honda ATC. The ATC will get you through water, it'll get you through swamp and mud. The fact is, the ATC works so good down here. There's a story going around that Mr. Honda used to live on the bayou. Everybody know he lived by Shreveport. Most people have to wait for the network news to come on. But people who have cable news network never have to wait for the news to come on. Because cable Brian news Kent network is always on, 24 Silver hours a day. The Discover the Brian variety of CNN, its, its newsmaker interviews, investigative reports, the unusual features, and of course, news. Turn on CNN throughout the day, and you'll never have to wait for the news again. Florida, a vacationer's paradise, a retiree's dream, an international blend of people and industries. Visit the launch pad for our nation's race into space. Then travel to a magic kingdom. Explore the mysterious river of grass. And then relax in Old Key West. Discover Florida, Monday night at 8.05 Eastern Time on Superstation WTBS. The second quarter of tonight's game is brought to you in part by Chevrolet. Chevrolet is USA 1, and USA 1 is taking charge. Great look at part of the crowd of 57,700 here. The previous record for the largest football crowd in the state of North Carolina was a crowd of 57,500 at Durham, North Carolina. Uh, they said at Durham, uh, it was in 1949, uh, Duke versus North Carolina. So interestingly here, we have uh, the crowd record being broken by 200 at NC State. I'm sure that they're, they're, the reason that the officials called timeout again, by the way, is they did not have the uh, time clock, the, the clock that times the allowed time between plays, the 25-second clock properly counted. Now it's underway, and finally we're back into action. Opening play of the second quarter. Second down five from the 39-yard line. NC State trailing 7-3. Wall in motion, double tied in. That's the tailback. And it's number 
42, Mike Miller inside the 35, close to the first down. Al Stevens, the defensive left tackle, making the stop. Ed Emery played in front of a lot of big crowds here at uh, Carter Fenley. He'd like to play in front of a big crowd at his home park, wouldn't he, Tim? Well, he, he's building a program where uh, they, they can compete with anybody in the country at this point. Uh, they, they still don't really have the horses that some of the major colleges have, but they've made great strides in the last couple of years. One thing that you're going to see East Carolina State, I mean, excuse me, North Carolina State do all night long is change formation shift in motion on third down short that's Vince Evans the fullback who dives over right guard and gets the first down for NC State remember East Carolina leading 7-3 14-15 to go first half by the way we we understand from our statistician David Carroll here that the pass reception for the touchdown will go as a team pass completion of six yards touchdown credit will go to Norm uh, Norman Vane, the tight end, but will be a team pass reception in terms of the statistics, in case you're keeping score at home. On a first and ten, Esposito in a whole heap of trouble back at his 40-yard line. Penalty marker down at the line of scrimmage. Looked like there was some movement before the snap. You got, oh. the nose, you got the nose man moving on that one. It, lo it looked like the center, Ron Kozer, snapped the ball a little bit late because the quarterback was backing out of there and in anticipation of the ball. Ron Kozer was 6'2 before that penalty, and after he was hit by Jerry Rogers, he's about 5'8". Dead ball, encroachment, contact was made by the wide. That's the second penalty of the night now the, against uh, East Carolina. And there are a couple of scores, Virginia leading Navy 14 to 10 George Welch's former team Navy Virginia beat Duke in the opener of the year we may be seeing Virginia on uh, TBS here this year and they look to be improved so far third quarter score Brigham Young leading Baylor 14 to 7 that's the first quarter score by the way number 23 walking off the field for East Carolina their strong safety Keith Brown the senior from Harrisburg was shaken up on the play comes out of the ball game as you can see as uh, he appears to be all right He'll, since the trainers had to come out there, he had to go out for at least one play. First down five after the penalty. Line of scrimmage, 26-yard line of East Carolina. Out of the eye formation. Esposito. To McIntosh. Very nice move by Joe Mack. He gets the first down, down to the 15. Clint Harris makes the tackle, his fourth of the night, but only after McIntosh gets the first down. That's McIntosh's fifth carry, about 35 yards now on the night. Starts it out to the right, just looking for, looking for a hole. Look at those quick feet. Now he's looking back inside. Harris does a nice job reacting and hanging on here. It's a touchdown for Joe Mack. First down 10 at the 16-yard line. Double tight ends, only one receiver. He's split wide to the top of the screen. That is Ricky Wall. He's off to Joe Mack again. Douglas to the 11-yard line. Tackled by P.J. Jordan, the linebacker. A little unnecessary roughness. Continuation of action. Same play. This is designed to hit between the guard and the tackle, but when you've got a guy like McIntosh, you can end up going anywhere with it. It'll be a half the distance penalty. Probably unnecessary rust, roughness, something of that nature. We'll get the signal in a moment. The flags are down about the eight-yard line. Excellent shot from ground-level camera. We have cameras all over the stadium, as usual, very proud of our technical production of football and primetime NCAA telecast. Dead ball, personal foul on the white, automatic first down. Third penalty of the night against NC State for a total of 26 yards. And there is Wolfie, the Wolf Pack. <laughs> there you go, both teams with three penalties each now. Most of them emotional uh, penalties caused by the intense level of this game. First and goal for six. There's that wishbone. Double tight ends. That's the fullback. Vince Evans, number 44, down to the three-yard line. East Carolina leading 7-3, but that lead about to disappear if NC State has its way. You're going to see a shot of this meat grinder formation. Nothing fancy about this. Going to knock him right off the ball. 
Tom Reed's former mentor, Bo Schimbeckler at Michigan, would be very proud of the big, tough inside short yardage football. Three yards in a cloud of Carolina dust here. Ricky Isom in at fullback now. McIntosh and Miller are the other two backs in that wishbone formation on a second and goal. There's McIntosh leaping. The ball may have popped loose. P.J. Jordan with a vicious hit there at about the one-yard line. There's that meat grinder formation. McIntosh just trying to get up in the air and get over. And it was Jordan and Grant coming back in over the top to keep him from scoring those six points. Linebackers get off the ball four or five yards. They get off the ball as far as the uh, running back so they can hit him at the same kind of momentum that the running back hits the line. Third down goal, double tight ends, wishbone, handoff, Evans diving. On the third down play, East Carolina has checked NC State out of the end zone. Let's see what, from about a foot out, that Tom Reed is planning to do now as you get that great view from the end zone. First, first big decision for Tom Reed here. McIntosh trying to take it up over the top. They do a nice job of penetration, force him to jump too early, and he doesn't get it in. Both of the captains, the quarterback, the defensive captains, go over to talk to Ed Emery's defensive coordinator. And Ed Emery, of course, standing back there announcing his opinion as his coordinator, Tom Throckmorton's talking to the defense, and there's the defensive coordinator that actually the man you're looking at right there for NC State. Tom Reed just finished talking to his quarterback. That's Tom Bata. His mind's on, on the next series. Yeah. He's glad his defensive unit's not having to keep East Carolina out of the end zone right now. Whatever the case, NC State is going for the points here. They trail 7-3, 11-26 to go second quarter. The nose of the ball is just inches away from the end zone line. I mean literally just inches over on the left side hash mark. They have those big tight ends. Jeff Brown in there along with Tim Foster, about 400 pounds of tight end. And they'll have the wishbone with Ison, McIntosh, and Miller. Let's see, if, let's see if they'll extend the count. Sometimes... Uh, in this kind of a situation, quarterback, instead of going on a quick count, will extend it and try to get that defensive line rocking a little bit. Let's see if they do that. Eight men on the line. Fourth down. That's Mike Miller. Touchdown! NC State has taken the lead. Mike Miller, the sophomore from Greensboro, North Carolina. Took his six-foot, one-inch, 210-body high into the air. And across the plane of the goal line. They call it a six-pack here at Carter Fenton. We'll see it again here. Kozer and Moxley and Milinchek do a nice job of getting down under the defensive line. And uh, Miller was in the end zone almost before he left the ground. Super job by the offensive line. Mike Cooper for the point after. It's good. Into the... Finley Fieldhouse at the north end of Carter Finley Stadium and for the first time this evening NC State well not for the first time they led 3-0 then trailed 7-3 and now it's 10-7 the Wolf Pack that was an 80 yard drive took nearly five minutes to get it into the end zone I spent a lot of time driving like this and even more time driving like this nowadays I almost wonder which is tougher on an engine that's why I need an oil this good Quaker State. Quaker State quality gives you all the protection you need for any kind of driving and any kind of car. It's refined from Pennsylvania grade crude oil, and that's quality. So whatever you drive, however you drive, you need Quaker State. You need an oil this good. Clean of the Rockies, the fresh of the Rockies. Brewed the Coors way, natural and pure. Coors to you. Clean of it all night through. The fresh of it. Rocky Mountain Gold, you've got it. The best of the Rockies is yours. 
by the way will be going to that Dodgers Braves game in Los Angeles immediately following tonight's football game McMurtry versus Valenzuela Braves three games out in that NL West race they lost three to two last night almost pulled it out of the ninth inning big controversy when Benedict was he hit by the pitch or did he foul it into his leg Tim did you see that at the end I say that it nicked the bat <laughs> They're the deep receivers. We'll be joining that game, by the way, and keeping you posted on it. Henry Williams, Jimmy Walden, ready to take the kickoff. Well, I've worked with you for over a year now, and you're usually right. <laughs> Here's your 10 bucks. Thank you. Cooper hits it on the ground or hits into one of the linemen, and it's fallen on by East Carolina. They're going to have the ball out here at their 43-yard line. Ed Emery, their coach, said, if they squib kick it like that, we are going to try to get one of our up players on the ball. Of course, that's dangerous. Meaning if you fumble it, it's almost like an onside kick. And now he's got it way out here at the 43. There's the scoring drive, as I said, almost five minutes. 80 yards, 13 plays. Miller's one-yard dive. One after by Kofer. 10-7 lead. NC State over East Carolina. First and 10 from the 42. Tony Baker. That's about four yards. Now speaking of that kickoff, George Allen used to do that with the Los Angeles Rams. He had a kicker. And I really forget who it was right now, but that was really accurate. And every once in a while, he'd just take it and aim it at one of those offensive linemen there. <laughs> the guy had turned to retreat to get back into the wedge, and a ball hit him in the back of the head. Far be it from George Allen to think of anything tricky, right? Of course. Ingram throwing on the run, incomplete at the 40 yard line. Pass intended for Henry Williams. Dwayne Green covering on the play for NC State, along with Nelson Jones, the freshman. 10.44 to go, second quarter. And we're going to have ourselves third down and about four. Ingram, by the way, two out of four throwing the ball for 21 yards. That's a tough pass sprinting out to his left and throwing that way. He was getting pressured uh, to the left, too, which uh, prohibited him from pulling up and really getting his feet under him. But Nelson Jones did a nice job reacting on that uh, outside pattern. Four for the first down. He does not get it, however. He got only a yard or two. He stopped short of the midfield strike, hit by Raymond Phillips. Ingram is about six feet tall, 180 pounds at quarterback, and he can take a lot of hits, but he can't take too many from a guy like Raymond Phillips, who's, who's really a ton of fun. Wilson's going to go back for NC State to take the punt, and in comes Jeff Bolts for his third punt of the night. One of the things that we'll show you a little bit later was, is the alignment of the tight end for East Carolina. They stand up as opposed to getting down in a three-point stance like most tight ends, and it's kind of an interesting concept. A good punt. It's going to drive Wilson back inside his five. He's in trouble back there. Goes down right at the five-yard line. First man on the tackle, number 59, Donald Reed. And it'll be NC State's ball in a whole lot of trouble offensively from their own five-yard line. NC State leading by a score of 10 to 7 from Carter Fenley Stadium. 57,700, largest crowd to ever see a football game in this state. Double play. Anyone who pitches for a living loves a beautifully turned twin killing. Hi, this is Tom Seaver for the Sporting News, and we have a twin killing for you. Two issues for the price of one to introduce you to the Sporting News, the Sports Bible. That's right, you'll get 26 issues of the Sporting News for just $9.99. Two for the price of one. And you can't buy the Sporting News for a lower price anywhere. It's the magazine that gives me the no-nonsense details of all Major League Sports and college action. To love sports is to love the Sporting News, the Sports Bible. Why don't you subscribe today, and here's a friend to tell you how. That's right, Tom. You get the sporting news at the low rate of just 39 cents an issue. 26 issues for $9.99. That's half the regular subscription price. Call toll-free 1-800-257-1234. In New Jersey, 1-800-232-6966. Or write to the sporting news. P.O. Box 7500, Atlanta, Georgia, 30357. Over five and a half million fans attended NCAA Division I AA football games in 1982. The Division I AA membership has established its own proud tradition. An exciting competition of college football. This season, 85 Division I AA teams will be aiming for its 
own national championship, their own national championship, December 17th in Charleston, South Carolina. Support college football at all levels. The preceding message provided by the NCAA along with the grammatical incorrect. <laughs> Got the ball on the five-yard line here, Bob, and this is a, this isn't a bad time to take a chance. To fire the ball down the field. They've got their fastest player in the football game, and it's play action. They're throwing a takeoff. Coach Tim Foley has called the play for you again. It was incomplete, intended for number two Ricky Wall, covered by the honorable mention All-American from '82, Glenn Harris and Kelvin Walker. Good call, Tim. Play action fake. And this is just put air under the ball and let this young man run under it. Now, he does a nice job going up for the ball. He has the ball. And Harris comes in and knocks it out of there. Great defensive play. That's why Clint Harris is a big pro prospect. Harris has the size, speed, all of that sort of thing to play in the pro. Here comes number 25, Joe Green, the sophomore from Wise, North Carolina, trying to sweep wide. He gets nothing. Loses some yardage, I think. They're going to spot it at about the three-yard line. I think he may have lost a yard or two. Larry Berry, freshman linebacker, number 90, made the stop. Perfect pursuit angle. Comes over and is protected against the cutback. Look at that body position. Puts that face right in the numbers, and down he goes. Larry Berry's from New Bern, North Carolina. Uh, speaking of Joe Green, number 25, the ball carrier. I sure do like him at NC State. Junior college All-American, by the way. Complete the number 19 Phil Brothers for a first down and out of bounds at the 23 yard line. Clint Harris covering on the play. Ten first downs for NC State now. They lead the game 10 7, 9 0 2 to go. We've thrown this pass about four times. It's driving the cornerback off, and then Brothers has got the quick feet, breaks it back down along the sidelines, creates some distance between himself and the defensive back. Brothers has three catches for 40 yards now. It's Esposito in his first game for NC State after transferring from junior college is five out of ten, six out of ten for 70 yards. And throw his 11th pass of the night. Seventh completion out to the 34-yard line. Another first down. Stanley Davis, number 17, makes the catch. Stanley from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Harrison Grant covering. Caparis isn't in bad shape. Same pattern. And North Carolina State, just like any offensive football team, as long as something work is working, then you'll stay with it. Just like last week against Florida State, East Carolina stayed with that freeze option. They gained 60 yards in the last four plays of the game last week. As long as it's working, North Carolina continues to throw that ball. 8.32 to go in the second quarter. Now first and 10 from the 34. Two or three tough yards inside. Joe McIntosh carrying the ball. Went behind his left guard, Greg Steele. Tackle was made by Kenny Phillips, his fourth of the night. Phillips, number 20, and there's Joe Mack. One thing that's got to be going across Tom Reed's mind now, uh, that's the fourth time Brothers has caught that pass, and they've thrown it two, two other times. And uh, before the night's over, Brothers is going to come down there, break down a little bit like he's going to run that sideline pattern and just fly up the field. Saw McIntosh coming off the field there. 40 yards on the night so far and seven carries for him. He's out of the ball game now. Mike Miller's in there at tailback. On a second and five from the 39, Esposito. Throws it complete to Miller. Let's see where they spot it. He's out close to a first down, but he was hit instantly by number 49, Mike Grant, the inside linebacker. And it looks as though they spotted it short of the first down flags. It'll be third down in inches. 7.34 to go second quarter. Grant played that as well as you can play it. He was getting some depth in the zone. The ball was thrown, and he made contact just about the time the ball got there. Miller did a nice job hanging on. Back to the wishbone formation, short yardage. There's Miller getting the first down. Out to about the 47 of NC State. East Car One way to stop this explosive East Carolina offensive football team, Tim, is to do exactly what NC State's doing, and that's control the ball. That's exactly right. That's a formation that five years ago you used to see a lot, and uh, the defenses have kind of grown a little bit, figured out how to shut it down, so now it's a short yardage situation for the Wolfpack. And, and another thing you better watch for is they're not doing a real good job of checking out the quarterback after he hands the ball out. He just may keep it on one of those short yardage situations. Number two, Wall, and motion to the bottom of the screen. This is first and 10 from the 46. Esposito's going to keep the ball, but not 
under the conditions <laughs> that Tim was describing. He's nailed behind the line. The first man there was a freshman who's 6'6", 240 pounds from Sandersville, Georgia, Randy Watts. In a situation like this, it goes down as a sack in the offensive line. Coaches will talk about how you shouldn't let the quarterback get sacked, but that was good coverage by the Pirates. And the quarterback just held the ball too long, and eventually they're going to get to you. Third sack of the night, by the way, by the Pirates. They were very frustrated in not being able to get to Florida State's Kelly Lowry last week. Esposito, pure pocket passer. Pass intended for Brothers, incomplete down at about the 43. And coming into the ball game with a play is number 17, Stanley Davis. Tom Reed uses his receivers to run plays in and out of the ball game. Third down, 15. Line of scrimmage, 41-yard line of NC State. They lead in the game, 10-7. Esposito now, 7 out of 11, throwing the football. You can see that flak jacket on Esposito there. of ECU 7. Wolf Pack on the march again. Double tight ends. Only one receiver. Backs in the I formation. They're Miller and Isom. Esposito in trouble but throws on the run. Incomplete. Diving attempt by Ricky Wall. One of the reasons that pass was thrown to the wrong place is Esposito was about to be knocked into next county. Ed Emery, is he intense? I can answer that very easily. Great mixture of play, Colin. Take a look at some college football scores. Boston College defeating Clemson 31 to 16. Tennessee in the third quarter getting back on the track after losing to Pittsburgh in their opener, shutting out New Mexico under a new coach out there at New Mexico, by the way. Second down 10 from the 18 yard line. Nothing doing much on that play. Mike Miller, the ball carry. Here comes Brothers back into the game. As we mentioned, that young man was a quarterback in high school. He's in watch it, watch him in practice. He's got great body control, real good feet. I don't know how much flat out speed he has, but he's got some good coaching, and obviously he's a good listener. Slot left formation. Third down eight NC State from the 17. Esposito in trouble again. Grab from behind, through on the move, incomplete. And hit the turf at about the 21. I really like the poise of Mike Esposito. He was under intense pressure. Jeff Pegues was all over him, number 84, and he still got rid of the ball. Almost threw an interception, though. Rolling out to the, the wide side. They're trying to get the slot man in the corner of the end zone. Never really had a chance to take a look. It's times like that where the mothers don't want their kids to be quarterback. All right, Cooper is going to attempt another 34-yard field goal now in a fourth and nine from the 17. He had a 34-yard successful attempt in the first quarter. NC State leads 10-7. He's had tendonitis in his kicking leg all week. Let's we'll see if it affects him. If it infects him, a lot of kickers would like to have it. <laughs> As Cooper connects on his second 34-yard attempt, and now NC State takes a 13-7 lead at halftime, or with 4.38 to go in the half, and the people wearing the red and white are a little happier than the gold and purple at the moment in Raleigh, North Carolina. Clean of the Rockies, the fresh of the Rockies, brewed the Coors way, natural and pure. Coors to you, clean of it all night through. The fresh of it, Rocky Mountain gold, you got it. The best of the Rockies is yours. Why?
do so many people now turn to cable news network for their news? It's on 24 hours a day. It gives me the news quick and fast. No, no beating around the bush. It's there all the time. CNN is always there when you need the news. It gives you such full coverage. Cable News Network delivers the news in more depth. They're accurate. They're concise. It's great. I love it. For millions of people, CNN is the news. Cable's most important network. Turn to CNN on your system or contact your cable operator to get it. WTBS Sports are very happy to announce our participation once again this year in the Chevrolet Scholarship Program as part of every primetime college football broadcast this season. Tim and I will be selecting a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player from each of the competing teams. Chevrolet will then honor those selections with a $1,000 contribution to each school's general scholarship fund to assist deserving students in their chosen academic curriculum. We're pleased to be associated with Chevrolet and the scholarship program. It's now in its 13th year, recognizing the exceptional performances of both college athletes and the college students. The Chevrolet's most valuable players for tonight's game will be announced near the conclusion of the telecast. And a scholarship will go to each school of $1,000 thanks to our friends at Chevrolet. Well, there's, there's Tom Reed, and he's getting some of the answers that he wanted, and they're, they're coming back in the right fashion. Obviously, he's found a quarterback. And something that hasn't been talked about much is the success that his secondary is having. Because when you do a nice job in the secondary, what happens is the quarterback gets sacked or tries to scramble, and they don't usually point out great coverage. 13 to 7, NC State leading now. You see, they won last year 33 26. East Carolina was driving when the game ran out last year. They threw an interception to stop them. It's always been a good series, even though NC State leads 10 3. Most people felt East Carolina was favored in this game. The short kickoff picked up by Biner, and Biner runs it out close to the 30 yard line for East Carolina. Got an offsides on uh, State on the kickoff. They'll have an opportunity for East Carolina to decide whether to get it out or not. The 30 yard line, I don't know if they want an opportunity to get it in the hands of their great kick returner, Henry Williams, or not. We'll know in just a moment. By the way, talking about stopping this powerful and explosive East Carolina offense, two drives that resulted in one touchdown and one field goal in the second quarter by North Carolina State consumed over 10 minutes on the clock, thereby keeping the pirate offense off the football field. They're going to kick it again. Yeah. Well, back in the early 70s, the Dolphins, uh, the Dolphin defense was offsides on the kickoff, red. Always outstanding, and one of the reasons was uh, kick and Zonka and Mercury Morris, and they'd just eat up the clock. Listen to these stats for East Carolina. Offensively in the first half so far with 4 431 to go, 18 yards passing. And they have 18, that'll be uh, 50, 60, only about 60 yards rushing. Look at the time of possession on there. That tells it all. There's Cooper ready to kick off again now back from the 30 yard line. Well, last week in 23 minutes, East Carolina managed to score 46 points, so there's no telling what can happen. But the uh, Wolfpack have done a great job in containing Kevin Ingram. He's the type of player that can explode any moment. hits it on the ground again. This time it goes to Biner again. Across the 30. He's got five more yards, six more yards than he had, seven more yards than he had on the previous attempt. So a two-yard net gain after the penalty, I guess you might say. At any rate, East Carolina has the ball out of the 36-yard line, trailing 13 to 7, 425 to go in the first half. So sign in the Carter Friendly Stadium in the end zone. The South End sign says, Welcome WTBS, go Braves. Speaking of the Braves, they're playing the Dodgers tonight. We'll be going to that game for the telecast immediately following this one, and we'll keep you updated if it starts before this football game is over. Ingram, toss it. Walden, he's got the speed to turn it outside. Gets the first down and a little bit more and goes out of bounds just near the midfield stripe at about the 49-and-a-half-yard line of East Carolina. Both of these teams have four good backs. Two tailbacks for East Carolina, you see, are 43 Baker and 36 Walden, and their two fullbacks are 44 Biner and 32 Branch, and they'll rotate all of those guys in there, and they can all play their position very well. First and 10 from the 49 for East Carolina, 418 remaining in the first half of play.
to the fullback. And Biner drives to about the 46 yard line of NC State. Well, that time, East Carolina was in an unbalanced formation. The tight end, although he was standing up, was not an eligible receiver. And they had an uncovered lineman on the short side of the field. I'm sure they're just trying to see uh, if State makes any adjustments there. Strong side now goes to the far side of the field on a second down and five from the 45. That's the same formation. Here's England. Gets the first down. They spin him back, though. He may have lost it. He got right to the 41-yard line, but when he finally went down, and they're going to decide that it was on his own momentum, not the impact of the tackle, he comes up short of the first down. Mark Franklin made the stop, so we will have a third down and nearly two yards for Kevin Ingram. Well, Kevin was a fingernail away that time. Piling up a lot of yards. Great pursuit by this uh, Wolfpack defense. A lot of young players out there really beginning to prove themselves. It's close to the first down. The NC State fans feel it was not achieved by East Carolina on the third down and two. I'm looking at the official and where he spots the ball. They'll probably have to bring the chains in. Tackle made by Anthony Hicks and Andy Hindle. They're going to bring the chain in. And as I put my binoculars on it down there, it looks as though it's going to be short of the first down. We'll see when they stretch it out. If it, if it is short, trailing 13 to 7, Ed Emery will have an opportunity to make a decision on whether to go for the short yardage play. Uh, Tim, a prediction? At this point in time, it's it's 13 to 7, and I uh, well, let's see how far he's got to go. About an inch. About an inch. <laughs> I think he'll go for it. There you go, Art Baker is the man in the dark blue shirt, the offensive coordinator, and in the jacket on the side is Ed Emery, the head coach, and here comes Kevin Ingram, number one. Interesting substitution there. Williams is in the football game. You know, and obviously Williams isn't a, a short yardage performer. Only 5'8". One thing they want the Wolfpack defense thinking about is covering that young man deep. Fourth down and actually about four inches to go for the first down. Half the Football, double tight ends. And they're both down in a three-point stance. They get the first down. They hand it off to 44 Ernest Biner, who just simply went behind his left guard, 285-pound North Carolina powerlifting champion Terry Long, who did some powerlifting there. That's tougher than the weights when you got to powerlift Raymond Phillips and Todd Blackwell. And he is such a quiet, unpretentious fella. But he is massive. Now look at that. Now, <laughs> we we made him do that. That's and, right. He was, know, he, he was kind of reluctant. You guys really, I have to do this. Oh, we no. really didn't make him. We convinced him. Nobody could have made him do this. <laughs> right. Lardner threatened to expel him from the contest. Ah, <laughs> oh, the pass is complete. The number 14, Stephon Adams, on the first and ten from the 40, and with 1:59 to go in the first half of play, ECU trailing NC State 13 to seven. The Pirates are on the march. And this is the kind of rhythm that they're trying to establish. Rolling out to the left, he's on about his fourth step. He's got the ball in the air. And the next time he'll come back and pull up and hit the split end coming in behind the secondary, or he may keep the ball and run it. The Wolfpack has kept them from establishing that rhythm. Again, they're in an unbalanced front. And down two from the 32-yard line of NC State. Ingram keeps it. Looking for some room, finding a little bit, down to the 20. Gets the first down, and Kevin Ingram, the man who makes this offense go, keeps on rolling. You know, Kevin Ingram was recruited from Villanova by head coach Ed Emery. He said Oklahoma and Alabama tried to get Ingram. You can see why. Great feat. You know, in his high school in Philadelphia, he was the whole show. At Villanova, he was the whole show, and he's had to learn how to use the other tools that he has that is his beck and call here. First and ten at the 19-yard line. There's the fullback, Biner. Tough going. Down about the 16, 17-yard line of NC State. Clock down to 125, 124 and counting down. 
as we near the end of the first half of play. East Carolina has two timeouts remaining. They used one earlier. NC State has three. They're not interested in using theirs, of course, right now. Ingram has made great progress in terms of poise and in terms of throwing the ball. Art Baker said they spent a lot of time this spring and early summer just working on throwing the football. Stanton said the same thing from FSU. But he's just a much better all-around quarterback than he was last year. On a second down eight, Ingram pumping, throwing into the end zone, incomplete. He threw into the end zone, but his receiver was at the five-yard line, which was the problem with the incompletion. Nelson Jones is covering number 22, Ricky Nichols. Three out of six for 35 yards throwing the ball now. The passing statistics for Kevin Ingram. It'll be third and eight from the 18-yard line and 54 seconds to go. But they're going to have to try to go for a first down here or else we'll see the very talented field goal kicker by Jeff Heath is his name. There's our halftime show coming up. Hope you'll join us for that. Ingram didn't like what he sees, calls a timeout. Uh, one of the reasons is uh, East Carolina has been having trouble on third down conversions. Only one out of five so far here tonight. Well, I know that you're always right, and I hate to even bring this up, but I think that Hendel called the timeout, and I think that uh, the Wolfpack was trying to get into a nickel alignment, and they had uh, too many men down here the short side of the field. But listen to this. Do I sound like a Philadelphia lawyer? I didn't say he called timeout. I said he didn't like what he saw. <laughs> oh my if you buy that I have some property for you and some swap land down in Florida it'll be third and eight from the 18 nevertheless when we return back here to Carter Finley Stadium we are USA one and proving it at Chevy Cavalier. Cavalier's high compression two liter engine with electronic fuel injection gives you more power than the three leading imports. And even though Cavalier's sedan is shorter outside than Honda Accord sedan, it gives you six cubic feet more passenger room inside, plus more room in the trunk. Chevy Cavalier from America's sales leader. USA One is taking charge. There he is. Red Wing Blackbird. You want some coffee? Oh, love, sir. Uh, just half a cup. Caffeine, you know. But this is new brim decaffeinated coffee. New brim? Now there's a new rich roasted taste that really satisfies. New brim. Mmm. It tastes this rich. Fill it to the rim. Try the new rich roasted taste of brim. Tim, I've learned during the commercial timeout there that Kevin Ingram needed the timeout, didn't want to use one, and asked NC State's Andy Hendel to call the timeout. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Third and eight from the 18. Very big third down conversion for the Pirates. They're only one out of five on these conversions so far. Ingram diving forward to the 14-yard line. He's a good four yards short of a first down. Don Wilson, the strong safety, making the play. Clock gets down to 39, 38 and counting. And let's see what East Carolina decides to do here. You, they just about have to go for the for the field goal at this point. They're trailing 13 to 7 and they need the three. Jeff Heath, who is one of the captains of this football team, to give you an idea of the respect he has, is their sophomore kicker. He had a field goal and an extra point blocked last week. Ingram holes also. So keep all those factors in mind as he attempts the field goal here. A 32-yard attempt. Well, they came far from getting all of that one. He certainly did, and the NC State defensive unit has prohibited the East Carolina Pirate from getting any points on the board. And that's got to be frustrating for an offensive football team to drive the ball down there to field goal range and then have that happen. All that time elapsed, the drive successful, and then no points on the board. There's too much emphasis on field goals. Uh, when. Uh, and there's too much pressure placed placed on a kicker when when uh, in, in professional football it's really discouraging too when you have these 150 pound guys come out onto the field and, and I'm certainly not demeaning what they do but because they really experience a lot of pressure but they move the goalpost back about 30 yards. It'll also uh, no doubt not be exactly an uplifting moment for East Carolina not getting the three points. They trail only 
13 to 7 here at the end of the first half of play though and NC State Wolfpack running under their lucky goal post at the north end of the field and off the field in front of the largest crowd ever to witness a football game in the state of North Carolina 57,700 we have all kinds of activities coming up here at halftime including a report on the upcoming Dodgers Braves game and Craig Sager with halftime activities the band stay with us when you need a little lift but you just can't take a break Chew Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. The cool, refreshing feeling of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum puts a little lift in everything you do. That good, smooth chewing, that crisp, clean taste. That Wrigley's Spearmint pickup is going for you. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum really keeps you humming. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum keeps you humming along. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum really keeps you humming. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum keeps you humming. Good luck, son. Make us proud. This year, two million families will send their kids off to college. But many of these kids won't be able to compete because they lack computer skills. A home computer can help. The Commodore 64 gives you more computer for less money than anyone else. Instead of saving for your kid's education, maybe you should spend a little for it. There's the score at halftime, a score of 13 to 7, NC State leading East Carolina, 57,700. We'll be back in just a moment to give you all the information about our Chevy All-American here. You know, every year we do a series, we started last year in cooperation with Chevrolet and select an All-American team as we go down the line with all of our primetime college football telecast and we're going to start that series here tonight as one of the moments in our halftime presentation so we'd like now to show you our Chevrolet all-american candidate and the new magic number in college football in 83 last year every football fan in America knew the number 34 of Herschel Walker this year the magic number is 22. Marcus Dupree, our first choice for All-American at running back. Dupree's physical statistics are impressive. 6'3", 230 pounds, and only a sophomore. But his performance stats are almost unbelievable. Here are the freshman numbers on Dupree. The first rookie ever to lead the Sooners in rushing. And his final total of 905 yards was the second best for a freshman in Big 8 history. Marcus scored 13 touchdowns, six of them over 60 yards. But when you want the real insight into a college player, ask an opposing coach like Arizona State's Daryl Rogers, who says you have to see Dupree to believe him. Whenever the name Marcus Dupree comes up, I think until you've played him, you really don't have the full appreciation of the young man. In uh, comparison of a Herschel Walker, that for the people in the West Coast, we've seen him and heard him about him and et cetera, but we never really appreciated Herschel because we never had to play against him. We had the privilege of playing Oklahoma in the Fiesta Bowl and saw Marcus Dupree gain 250 yards against a very fine defense. I can't imagine any other running back in America any better than Marcus Dupree. Combining brute strength with blazing open field speed. That's our first TBS Chevrolet All-American at running back from the University of Oklahoma. Number 22, Marcus Dupree. Well, I guess the question is, Tim, uh, will Marcus Dupree make America forget Herschel Walker? You know, usually a player like that comes along once a decade, and to have guys back to back like that is really amazing. And Marcus Dupree, we understand, had a little bit of a struggle in preseason practices for Oklahoma. A lot of people seeing if he really will reach his potential as a great All-American. TBS, we think he probably will this year. One of the things that we really enjoy bringing to you on our halftime presentations on our primetime college football telecast are the bands from the various institutions and we want to go to the field right now here at Carter Finley Stadium for some of the entertainment provided by the East Carolina band first of all the marching pirates 240 strong entertaining from Raleigh North Carolina
the pirate marching band from East Carolina University 240 strong in their gold and purple entertaining at Carter Fenley Stadium where NC State leads ECU 13 to 7 at halftime and now a word from the NCAA higher education today challenging motivating the mind 1983 marks the fifth year the NCAA is proud to feature some of the exciting programs offered by the nation's colleges and universities. The NCAA is providing time during college football telecasts to feature 14 academic programs that may be of interest to people considering a higher education. Here are some of the curriculums that will be features this fall. The meteorology is, is both a science and an art. The science comes in where we look at the maps and we analyze the maps and we make a forecast. The art comes in where we try to communicate that forecast. Broadcast journalism is not just getting in front of a camera and reading the news. It's knowing what you're talking about. It's being able to write the news. In studying physical therapy, you come to realize how much it really takes to run a hospital and how much physical therapy is needed in almost every aspect of life. The study of building construction is a study in management, a study in technical aspects of putting up a structure. Agricultural science involves the ap application of a lot of our modern technologies to the simple uh, study of how to produce more and better food for people. Higher education today. Challenging. Motivating the mind. The preceding message provided by the NCAA. You're looking at the East Carolina Marching Wolfpack Band, and we'll be coming back in a couple of minutes to take a look at their performance here at halftime at Raleigh, North Carolina. Coming up in just a moment, Craig Sager will be back in our studios in Atlanta with highlights and scores of other games, the TBS Top 20, and a report from Dodger Stadium right after this commercial message. We are USA One. Taking charge by unleashing a Chevrolet the competition can't touch. Camaro. Flat out selling every other 2 plus 2 sports coupe on the road today. And now Camaro is led by a new standard 5-speed five 5-liter five Z28. The hot selling Chevy Camaro. It still leaves everything but its shadow behind. USA One is taking charge. Wednesday, join us for a tribute to Grace Kelly, beginning with The Country Girl on the TBS Morning Movie. I don't like strong women, Mrs. Elgin. I'm not here to audition for you, Mr. Dodd. Grace Kelly, in her Academy Award-winning performance, stars with William Holden and Bing Crosby in The Country Girl. Then, on Wednesday afternoon, our tribute continues with Grace Kelly and William Holden in The Bridges at Toko Ree. A tribute to Grace Kelly, Wednesday, on the TBS Daytime Movies. Welcome back to the Action Center in Atlanta. Florida and USC went down to the wire and beyond. A new era beginning at USC with Ted Towner, the new coach, replacing John Robinson. The quarterback is Sean Salisbury, and he connects with Fred Cornwell. USC took the lead. Florida came back, went ahead. USC tied it at the buzzer, but missed a chance to win it when they missed the extra points when it ends the 1919 tie. Miami is coming back after a loss to Florida State. The Hurricane leads Houston 9-7. Rice on top of Minnesota, also in the second. BC quarterback Doug Flutie, 20 out of 36. The Golden Eagles score 28 points in the second half. Tennessee with a big lead over New Mexico. Virginia about to defeat Navy. It's 27-16 in the fourth. South Carolina, an easy time with Miami of Ohio. BYU is on top of Baylor going into the fourth period. Kansas TCU, not much offense there, 3-3. Louisiana Tech, North uh, New Mexico State, rather, no score in the first. Utah State, Arizona State just getting underway. Syracuse is on top of Kent State, now going into the fourth quarter. McNeese State, two-touchdown lead over Southeast Louisiana. Nevada, Las Vegas, San Jose State, Oregon State, Portland State just getting underway. Elsewhere, Mike Rozier passed I Am Hip to become Nebraska's all-time leading rusher. The final, 56-20 at 191 yards. Marcus Dupree played two quarters, rushed for 138 yards for Oklahoma. Lionel James and Bo Jackson, each scored touchdowns for Auburn. And Notre Dame routes Purdue 52-6. We'll have highlights later on for you. Dave Hall got the call for the injured Steve Smith and led Michigan over Washington State 2017. Ohio State quarterback Mike Tomsek, 21 out of 24 for four touchdowns. 
After a 10-10 tie at the half, North Carolina's Walter Black returned a punt 73 yards for a touchdown. Memphis State never recovered, and there's that tie between Florida and USC. Utah, Arizona just beginning. Meanwhile, Florida State, LSU, what a thriller this was. LSU jumps out to a 14-0 lead. Gene Lang with the ball, it's popped loose. Dalton Hilliard falls out into the end zone. He has three touchdowns. It's now 14-0. But the final play of the first half, Kelly Lowry keeps it. It's tied at 14. Florida State comes on strong third quarter. Greg Allen gets the ball, goes into the end zone for the touchdown. And FSU wins on the road 40-35. Alabama and Ray Perkins over Georgia Tech, 20 to seven. SMU having a tough time with Grambling. It's now 10-6. That is in the second quarter. Following our football game tonight, we'll have the Braves and Dodgers. Right now, the hottest rivalry in baseball. We have Skip Carey standing by in Los Angeles. Skip. Okay, Craig, we're here and ready to go to work as the second game of this big series will get underway in just a few moments, and we'll be keeping you up to date with it all evening long. A lot of controversy in the game last night. Braves trailed three nothing going to the ninth. Dale Murphy had a homer to start the inning. Then two more runners reached base. The count reached nothing and one on Bruce Benedict. He was trying to bunt a pitch inside a breaking ball from Steve Howe. The ball definitely hit Benedict in the leg. Ed Vargo said that it hit the bat first. Benedict argued vociferously and was kicked out of the game. And it may in fact have been the play that cost Atlanta the game. Benedict talked about it in the locker room after the game. I felt that the ball hit me. And he said the ball hit the bat. And I don't think that Ed is going to disagree with the fact that the ball hit me, but he contends that it hit the bat. And as I said, I felt that the ball hit me. I was a little upset, and uh, but I feel that I have a right to get upset sometime. And, um, and if he wants to throw me out of the ball game, that's his bet. Well, it was his business, and Benedict was lost for the game, and the Braves lost it. The final score, three to two. Tonight, Fernando Valenzuela, a tough left-hander on the mound for Los Angeles, and young Craig McMurtry will do the pitching for the Atlanta team. The Braves need this game and need it very, very badly. We'll be with you all night long, keeping you up to date and with the play-by-play -play story momentarily. Okay, Craig Sager, take it away. Thank you very much, Skip Carey. Due to the baseball game, we'll present our TBS Top 20 tonight at halftime rather than at the completion of the football game. CNN's Don Lennox will follow with the halftime news brief, and we'll be back throughout the second half to keep you updated on the baseball game and other scores. In war-torn Beirut, Lebanese troops in the Shouf Mountains south of the city are hearing reports of a massacre in the Christian village of al -Bire. Beirut Radio says at least 50 are dead. Some reports say over 100. In Moscow, the Soviets paraded the pilots that chased and shot down the Korean airliner last week. Killer pilot says he acted on orders to shoot after spotting what he thought was a spy plane. Back at the White House, Secretary of State Schultz reported to the president on his meeting with the Soviets' Gromyko in Madrid the president tells his weekly radio audience the Russians are stonewalling the world. In Vienna, Pope John Paul arrived to a welcome of hundreds of thousands as he began a four-day visit, the first papal trip to Austria in 200 years. Don Lennox with a CNN News Brief. State University band leaving the field. Sorry you didn't get to see the rest of the band. Uh, the NC State Wolfpack Band and the Pirate Band performing here at halftime. We have five minutes, 13 seconds remaining here in the halftime at Carter Finney Stadium in Raleigh, North Carolina. And now a word from the NCAA. 
Members of the American Football Coaches Association strive to improve the college selection process for the high school athlete. When an NCAA college offers a student athlete a grant in aid, it may only include tuition and fees, room and board, and books. NCAA rules prohibit anything else. We published the NCAA guide for the college-bound student athlete explaining these basic rules. For a free copyright, recruiting NCAA Box 1906, Mission, Kansas 66201. The preceding message provided by the NCAA. Let's look at highlights from the first half now. NC State leading ECU by a score of 13 to 7 here before the teams return for the second half of action. An interesting scoring play, Tim Foley, by uh, East Carolina. This is the pass, fumble, and recovery in the end zone. Ingram rolls to his right, drills the receiver. The receiver's hit, the ball's knocked out, and it's a gift touchdown. Norman Van, the tight end, uh, recovering the ball for the touchdown. It was Stephon Adams, the man who was tackled and lost the ball. Here's NC State's touchdown. This is after an 80-yard drive. Mike Miller going in from the score from about 18 inches out. And now setting up a field goal, watch number 43, Joe McIntosh. As a freshman, he's a junior now. As a freshman, he broke Ted Brown's rushing record. A great pro with the Minnesota Vikings. And that set up the 34-yard field goal. Two 34-yard field goals in the first half by Mike Kofer for NC State, and they lead in the game 13 to 7. We'll be back in just a moment after these important messages. I heard this scream. It's no ordinary crime. Not very nice, I'm afraid. The victims aren't ordinary women. Look in there. And he's no ordinary killer. What happens if the murderer really is a general? It's impossible. Nothing is impossible. Omar Sharif, Peter O'Toole, Night of the Generals. Sunday morning on Superstation WTBS. Vast and awesome, the oceans hold many secrets. Among them, the mystery of naval history's first ironclad warship, USS Monitor. Through skills of ECU's maritime historians and archaeologists, the wreck of the Monitor, lost for more than a hundred years, is being studied, its artifacts recovered. With its unique program opening new frontiers of knowledge in history and underwater research, East Carolina University is bringing mysteries of the sea to light. There are these statistics at the end of the first half. Uh, North Carolina State leading 13 to 7. Uh, out passing East Carolina, 90 yards to 31. And really the important stat that isn't on that screen is the time of possession, which was uh, vastly dominated by NC State in the first half, Tim. Well, the most important statistic there, Bob, is 90 yards passing for North Carolina State. Coming into the game, not knowing, coming into the game with an untested quarterback, and they've just done an excellent job of mixing it up on first down. And a lot of those passes have been completed on first down. Now. East Carolina has to make a decision, you know, they don't they can't just play the toss and that's what North Carolina State does best. They run that toss sweep out of the eye and they do a great job in the in the lead draw out of the eye. They do a super job running the ball, but now they have to think about two things. They've got to think about support strong side and most of those passes are com being completed to the weak side of the formation. You just saw the the NC State Wolf mascot go in to try to do away with the purple smoke bomb that was thrown on the field by some overzealous East Carolina fans. This is a backyard brawl here, a neighborhood rivalry. Greenville, North Carolina, the location of East Carolina, 85 miles away. They've played, four, this is the 14th game in the series. They've all been played here in Raleigh. And East Carolina comes over here and likes to raise as much havoc as they can with their stands, their fans in the stand, particularly down in the end zone. So we've got some purple smoke that is not rising very fast. Maybe it'll go away eventually. At any rate, Ed Emery's East Carolina Pirates have something much more serious on their mind now, and that's to figure out how to get some points on the board. After scoring 46 points last week against Florida State, only seven in the first half here against NC State. Now the question is, was Florida State's defense that bad, or is NC State's defense that good, or just how good is the offense of East Carolina early in the year? Tough questions to answer. Next week, by the way, we will bring you the telecast of the West Virginia Mountaineers versus the Maryland Terrapins. West Virginia and Jeff Hostetler, their great quarterback, won 
48 to 7 today. Hostetler was 15 out of 24 for two touchdowns and 213 yards in the first half. That's all he played. Maryland came from behind to beat Vanderbilt 21 14. And Boomer Esiason, Maryland's great quarterback, 17 out of 31, one TD, 269 yards. And that'll be at 8.05 Eastern Time, 5.05 p.m. on the East, on the West Coast, next Saturday night. And by the way, just a word about the supplementary series of college football games that we bring you here on WTBS. We're televising these college football games under the NCAA guidelines. It's designed to bring you games between teams who are often seen only on regional coverage and have little or no exposure on national TV. And because of the game selection rules, any game that WTBS selects in advance is tentative and, of course, could be subject to change. But we are expecting at this time to bring you that Maryland-West Virginia game. We hope you're enjoying this one. It's a good one. 13-7, NC State leading East Carolina here at halftime. There's the NC State sideline, and the Wolf mascot is just about single-handedly with his towel waved away all the purple haze from the south end zone. Very good job at halftime after the purple smoke bomb by, North Carol uh, by East Carolina. This is really the big Carolina football rivalry. I mean, North Carolina might give you a different story over it, but NC State and uh, East Carolina, and most of the people in this part of the state will say this is the state rivalry game. Yeah, and I bet at halftime, that man right there, Ed Emery, was talking to some people in a serious fashion, trying to get them excited. And Art Baker, the offensive coordinator and associate head coach, was trying to figure out a way to get Kevin Ingram free. There are the deep receivers for NC State. Back to take the kickoff off the foot of East Carolina's fine kicker, Jeff Heath, who, by the way, after having a great year last year, missed a relatively easy field goal earlier here tonight. Comes down to Joe Green on the goal line. Number 25. He needed to break that tackle and did, but he was delayed just long enough to get some support there and after the 23 yard line he went before being brought down by George Murdoch number 58 there's Joe Green number 25 leaving the field for NC State he's the third team tailback but McIntosh Miller and Green are you can just barely slide a piece of paper between them and their difference in talent Green was a junior college All-American at Schoen Junior College in North Carolina gained 1200 yards there so even though he's third team he's a fine player for NC State there is some talent in the backfield 14.53, we're just underway in the third quarter. First down 10 from the 22-yard line of NC State. That's Esposito, end off to his tailback, McIntosh, out to the 28-yard line. There's Mike Esposito. First half, he was 8 out of 15 for 90 yards, as Tim told you. The difference in this ball game, really statistically, has been Esposito and the passing game of NC State. Very effective thus far. There was some intense competition for that position. And uh, really the reason I think that Tom Reed chose Esposito was because of his leadership ability. Second down five, NC State from their own 27. They fake the pitch and then give it to number 44, Vince Evans, a former tailback who has a little bit of speed. He got out across the 32 for a first down. He was slammed down by number five, Calvin Adams. A great cr crackback block by Chris Cook on that play. Came in and really shook it loose and allowed the runner to scoot to the outside. That's one thing that a runner is always looking for is he cracks through the, the first line of defense. You know, he's looking to pick up some kind of a block coming from the, uh, the backside. On the first and 10, Esposito to throw. Line of scrimmage to 33. Throws it out here in the 46 yard line. There's going to be pass interference called against number five, Calvin Adams. Apparently, contact was made before the ball got there. Intended receiver was number 17, Stanley Davis. They come right back to it again, Bob. It's the sideline pattern back into the short side of the field. The dragging the tight end across the formation. And he zings it That's down. In the the side. On the wide. First down. So NC State. Good coverage. Brought the ball out here to the 48-yard line. It was excellent coverage. Yeah, I think that would eliminate that penalty. <laughs> <laughs> Could have extended some pro football players' careers, probably. <laughs> didn't have that. On a first and 10 from the 48, another penalty marker goes down this time at the line of scrimmage. And I believe they're going to call it a pre-snap penalty. The referee tonight, Robert Carpenter. Uh, by the way, I mentioned that I chatted with him. Dead ball. Illegal motion. Yeah. 
for quite a while today uh, about some new rules in college football. We've talked already about the coin toss rule change. A kick receiver, a punter, or even a kickoff returner uh, needs a two-yard circle around him or there can be interference with receiving the ball. And uh, that's a new rule this year. Also, there is a running into the kicker penalty, much like pro football. If a punter uh, used to be just roughing, but now you can call a five-yard penalty for running. And there can also be a penalty against the kicker if he fakes being hit. They call unsportsmanlike conduct. Here's Esposito. Had a man wide open but missed him. That was Brothers down about the 20-yard line. But Esposito just couldn't get the ball to him on the second down 15 from the 44. Well, we talked about it earlier, Bob. And that was the uh, out-and-up pattern. You know, he had he had set that up and he'd been working against uh, Caparis and against Adam back bat Adams back on that weak corner and those guys have been doing a good job they've been close the ball has just been thrown on time and it's low on the outside and it's tough to break up when you when you get in there and try and break it up you know, these over sometimes these overzealous officials reach rapidly for that yellow flag so it's second down 15 from the 44 here's Esposito hands it off and there's a, just a crack in there for McIntosh still up Ran into his own man, Chris Cook, and a couple of white-shirted East Carolinians. But he still got the ball all the way to the 22-yard line. Joe McIntosh has now gone over 100 yards for the 13th time in his career after that 35-yard carry. What you're looking at is a healthy Joe McIntosh. And he's not the type of back that's going to carry the ball 30, 35 times a game like a Marcus Allen. He's just not that big and not that durable. But when they use them the way they've been using them and the mixture that they've been able to work out, look at that balance. 124 That's yards on the night. Makes a great back. First down 10 at the 22-yard line. Here's Mike Miller, the other tailback. Can he get the block? He does not, but he gets about eight yards inside the 15 to the 13. And this NC State running game, the very thing that East Carolina defensive coaches feared most, is coming here to really chew up yardage as they did in the second quarter. Mike Miller is the backup. We're really not the backup tailback, number 42. Now they alternate pretty much of the time. Uh, sometimes they're bringing in plays, and sometimes it's just a matter of spelling the other runner. But it is a dynamic one-two punch. You can see on Coach Ed Emery's face of East Carolina, the question mark. How are we going to stop the NC State short passing and effective running game? Here comes Miller the other way, and he breaks through. Down at the 10-yard line, gets the first down. It'll be first down 10 from the 10 for NC State, and they lead in this game 13 to 7. And Ed Emery, as you look at him, you must understand that he was a four-year player at East Carolina. He's coached in the ACC, at Tech and Clemson, some other places, but he has East Carolina blood in his veins. He wants to build a program of national prominence at East Carolina, and this game, he feels, is one of the biggest in the history of East Carolina. He's trailing 13-7, and the Pirates have their backs to the wall again. This is number 41, Ricky Isom, the fullback, getting two or three off the left side. It'll be second and goal from the 10. Uh, actually, now they're going to mark it about the 7. Again, Burnett and Steele and Shavik and Moxley and Melinchek doing a nice job up front. Shavlek is alternating with uh, Koser. Koser's in there right now. He's opening those cracks, and then you've got backs like State has. They don't need much room. Second and goal from the seven. Davis flips wide to the left side. Here's Mike Miller. He darts down just inside the five to about the four. Penalty marker was thrown at the point of impact. It's going to bring up third down and five, or whatever the result of this uh, infraction is. Holding the call against NC State, and that's a, that's a break for East Carolina for sure. You know they'll accept this penalty. That's all a part of not beating yourself. It's one thing that coaches harp on and harp on and harp on, but it's awful difficult. You know that you're supposed to block the man across from you and make good contact and start to drive, and he begins to slip off. And you almost can't help it. That little that left arm just kind of slides out, and you get a hand. Holding, through. ten yards on the red. It's still second down. Now, they move it out here uh, to about the 16. It, of course, should have been a little bit closer to the 17 to make it uh, just accurate from where it was on the 7. But let's call it 
second down and goal from the 16 and a half yard line. Formation to the sideline, motion back to the wide side, and they've got a slot down here at the bottom. Esposito throws to the right side. That's Vince Evans at the 10, at the 5, and down to about the 3 yard line. That was second down. It'll bring up third down and goal from about where they would have been had there not been a holding call. You get in this place on the field, and you come out in a double formation like that with two wide receivers to each side, you're usually going to get man-to-man -man coverage. And what they did was they got the ba ball to the fullback on a screen situation. His man, the, the, the man that was responsible for him, I'm sure got walled off by one of the linemen. And everybody else was man-to-man. -man. It took him a while to get back into the pursuit. Into the double tight end formation. Wishbone now. It is third down and goal from the four-yard line for NC State. That's Mike Miller leaping, but it's Esposito keeping, and he gets to about the two-and-a-half-yard line on the fake dive. Esposito kept it. It is now fourth down and two yards to go from the two-yard line of East Carolina. NC State leads 13-7 with 10.43 remaining here in the third quarter. The NC State fans are calling for the Wolf Pack to go for it. NC State has called timeout. Esposito comes to the sideline. Well, again, that's another play that we talked about, Bob, that had to be coming at some time. And, uh, they tried it. East Carolina was alert on defense. I'm sure, I'm sure their defensive coaches talked to them about it at halftime. We'll be back in a moment. In the world of driving, there is a name that is legend. The name is Dunlop. And the legend lives on the wheels of the world's finest automobiles. A legend proclaimed on racetracks and highways around the globe. Because the driver who knows tires demands the legend, Dunlop. The legend lives. When life designs are late, buyers don't give us a second chance. Emory's international service goes door to door, fast. Call Emory. We've earned the trust of American business. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Major General George Patton, U.S. Army retired. As a member of Western Gold's Foundation, I'm pleased to present the documentary, No Place to Hide, The Strategy and Tactics of Terrorism. Watch this on Sunday evening, September 11th. Check your local listings. This documentary is a must toward an improved understanding of a significant threat directed against the free world. No Place to Hide, Sunday, September 11th. An impressive start for Notre Dame. Senior quarterback Blair Keel from his own 38 to Milt Jackson. This play covers 61 yards, sets up a touchdown. The Fighting Irish route Purdue, 52 to 6. Now back to Bob and Tim. 52 to 6. Are you sure that really happened? <laughs> <laughs> Could have been just, just a studio game. Huh? That's uh, Notre Dame and Jerry Faust under all that pressure up at, uh, at Notre Dame. Now Purdue may have some pressure after that uh, backyard brawl in Indiana today. What you probably see down here, if they've got two tight ends in the game and they decide to go for it, what most teams like to do is get some play action and then cross the tight ends. Just get some traffic going back and forth across the field. Obviously, they're not going for it. They took a delay a game penalty, and that's just to give their kicker a better angle. They're looking for three points. Mike Kofer is the kicker. He was 8 out of 14 last year. He has two 34-yard field goals in this game. They're going to spot that ball at about the 7. It'll make Delay it a 24-yard field goal. 24-yard yard from the acute angle on the left side. Now, East Carolina could have refused that penalty. And probably should. Well, then what happens if Reed decides to go for it and score a touchdown? That's right. <laughs> Boy, those reporters really get on your case in the locker room, man. Good from here, and it is. NC State takes a 16-7 to lead over the Pirates of East Carolina. So now the Pirates are struggling even more. They had expected to have more than seven points on the board at this point in the ball game. 10.37 to go, quarter number three. A Denerex dandruff shampoo different. On this side, I feel a tingling sensation, and there's no tingling on this side. Look what you used. I can't believe it. The Selsun Blue has been my old standby. I've never had this feeling of 
working sensation as I had with the Denerex. Each shampoo has one medicine for dandruff. Only Denerex adds extra anti-itch medicine many dermatologists recommend. I'm not even going to look for anything else. I'm going straight for Denerex. Denerex shampoo or shampoo and conditioner fights dandruff and its itch with an extra relief medicine. Why do so many people now turn to cable news network for their news? It's on 24 hours a day. It gives me the news quick and fast. No, no beating around the bush. It's there all the time. CNN is always there when you need the news. It gives you such full coverage. Cable News Network delivers the news in more depth. They're accurate, they're concise. It's great, I love it. For millions of people, CNN is the news. Cable's most important network. Turn to CNN on your system or contact your cable operator to get it. The American Football Coaches Association endorses ethical recruiting standards and supports the student-athlete's search for academic and athletic excellence. Join the AFCA's efforts to support and practice ethical conduct in recruitment of student-athletes. Write NCAA Recruiting, Box 1906, Mission, Kansas, 66201, for a free brochure containing the basic rules. That's NCAA Recruiting, Box 1906, Mission, Kansas, 66201. The preceding message provided by the NCAA. Now, 16-7 lead by NC State over East Carolina's Pirates. 10.37 to go in the third quarter. And Cooper's kickoff. This time he goes ahead and hits it. There's Williams. He's going to take it two yards deep. He had a 99-yard TD last week. Can he find a crack? Williams finds a little room out to the 30. A 32-yard kickoff return. You can see why they're scared to death of this junior Henry Williams, who came from Northwest Mississippi Junior College, the national champs. He has a little bit of a sore knee, but he has blazing speed and great moves, Tim. And when you have a fellow that can truck like this, you can bet that the blockers pay a lot more attention to what they're doing because they know every time he touches the ball, it could be a 100-yarder. Chris Moorhard making the tackle for NC State. First down 10, East Carolina now on their own 30. Desperately wanting to get this high-powered offense on track. But they're having difficulties, as you see there. Number 43, Tony Baker, just can't get anywhere. Baker wasn't happy with Vaughn Johnson, who made his fifth tackle. He's the 82 leading tackler for this NC State team, number 33. And as Tom Reed said, this is a lean, mean fighting machine wearing number 33. He's an excellent athlete. He's going to be a high round draft choice because he does everything. He's got all the, the innate abilities of a superstar plus a great work habits. Second down seven, East Carolina from their own 33. Here's the pitch to the tailback again. It's Ricky Walden this time to the 36 yard line. Jimmy Walden, excuse me. And I'll tell you, the, uh, the offensive line, the highly touted offensive line, not really moving NC State's defense as was expected by most here, brings up about a third down four. Look at the ECU cheerleaders. Are they intense or are they intense? You know who's missing? We haven't mentioned this, by the way. John Floyd, the uh, starting center, had an appendectomy Monday, is missing from that East Carolina line. That's got to bother him a little bit. Here's Ingram, gets a good block. Throws on the run incomplete out there at about the 43-yard line. NC State's coverage is just outstanding. Don Wilson was covering number 44 Bynum. And uh, I'll tell you, the defensive coordinator here for NC State has done a job. A brand-new guy in a brand-new program. Hardly knows the players, and they're stopping one of the most potent offenses in the country. Well, Tom Batta came in last year from Kansas. And Rick Rachel's working with him, and... They've got some ex excellent coaches, and, and they've got to be happy with what they're seeing tonight. I know one thing. They were extremely nervous before the game started because they really weren't sure what to expect. There's both of this fourth punt. This can, could be returned. That's Don Wilson, but Wilson can't get much going. They're trying to pull the ball right out of his arms at the 26-yard line. Number 47, Tyrone Johnson, tried to rip it loose and run into the end zone. What game was it last year, Tim Foley? We had uh, New Mexico and Hawaii. One of the players pulled the ball out of the back's arm. Right. Scored a touchdown. touchdown. <laughs> Almost happened there. 30 yard line now for NC State. We have 9.02 to go, third quarter. Big engines were easy on oil, so you only had to change the oil every three to 5,000 miles. Today's smaller, higher revving engines can break down an oil's viscosity within 1,500 miles. That's why there's Castro. Tests show Castro suffers no significant breakdown of viscosity even after 5,000 miles. So use Castro. Otherwise, the future might not look too bright. Castro, engineered for smaller cars. Castro GTX, available at Kmart Automotive Centers. 
Get in touch with the world. Touch it. Get in touch with the news. Touch it. Get in touch when you want. 24 hours a day. CNN Headline News. A 30-minute newscast whenever you turn it on. Touch it. CNN Headline News. World and national news. Sports, weather, and more. If you don't have CNN Headline News, contact your cable operator today and ask for CNN Headline News. Ask for it now. Later in tonight's game, we'll be selecting the most valuable player from each of the teams, uh, checking the amount of $1,000, then will be donated by Chevrolet to each college's general scholarship fund to further assist qualified students in all their chosen academic fields. Both players will receive a Chevrolet MVP certificate acknowledging their outstanding efforts on the field tonight. First down 10 NC State from the 30. Number two, Wall goes in motion to the top of the screen. Esposito gives to the tailback. That's Mike Miller. Gets the first down, a run of about 12 or 13 yards. Keith Brown, the safety, making the tackle. And Tim Foley, if you're the defensive coach for East Carolina, what are you going to start doing to try to stop this NC State attack? Well, you just have to be do a better job of playing your man two-gap and making the tackle. That time, there was a man that uh, broke through there, P.J. Jordan. That, nobody really blocked him. He broke through and lost his footing and, as a result, missed the tackle. And that's what State is doing so well, that their secondary is coming up and making plays, and they're not missing. Isom doesn't get much out of it either. Hal Stevens making the tackle that time, so that's one of the ways to stop. Isom didn't get much. Isom Evans, the fullbacks, playing tonight. Isom 41, Evans 44, and McIntosh and Miller sharing time at the tailback position, and Esposito going all the way at uh, quarterback, and Virginia has defeated Navy 27-16, and George Welch's Virginia Cavaliers are 2-0, and Tennessee now comes to 1-1 one one with a 31-6 whopping of New Mexico, that game in Nayland Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee. Second down nine from the 45. Reverse. Uh, for reverse fake. fake, and Mike Miller keeps it and gets back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll bring up third down and nine, and East Carolina has stopped State here on two rushing attempts, and it's an obvious passing situation now. And Esposito, who's seven out of 18 for 103 yards, and NC State, four out of eight on third down conversions. Esposito, nine out of 18 for 103 yards. Most of his completions were not on third down, though. And the Wolf Pack has done a good job staying out of these third and long situations. Across the middle, it is complete, but it's far short of the first down. The tight end, number 86, Tim. Foster from Columbus, Ohio, made the reception, and now NC State's going to have to give up the football. Martinez and their punters only punted one time tonight. This will be his second punt. First time he got off a 48-yarder. He wears number 40. Martinez averaged nearly 40 yards a punt last year. Sophomore from Fredericksburg, Virginia. Tom Reed likes him, says he's an excellent punter. Look at 15, the man lining up there. You'll get to look at him in a moment for East Carolina back on his own 10-yard line. Henry Williams. Very dangerous. Will he have the opportunity? Yes. From his 10. Nowhere. Outstanding coverage by the Wolfpack. First man down, number 96, Benny Pegram. Benny's been around that football on special teams. 39-yard punt, two-yard loss on the return. And now personal foul against NC State. So they're going to get some return out of that of 10 yards thanks to the penalty. We have 6.41 to go in the third quarter. This is Bob Neal along with Tim Foley, our premier telecast of the 1983 primetime college football series here on TBS. Dead ball foul, late hit, personal foul, red. By the way, the, uh, we'll take a look at that. The Dodgers and Braves are getting underway. We're going to bring in you live updates on that game. What they always talk about on punts as you're covering the punt is to stay in your lane. Go straight down the field. Don't only converge on the ball carrier, but be ready for that lateral movement. And it was just a great job of getting down there, breaking down, and holding on. 97, Charles Flippen was the man called for the unnecessary roughness penalty. Just a yard or two on that. By the way, after a half an inning of the Dodgers-Braves game out in Los Angeles, it is scoreless. We'll be joining uh, Skip and the crew. Ernie and John, Pete, for uh, updates as we continue this football game and then joining immediately after this for the coverage of the Braves-Dodgers very crucial series out at Dodger Stadium. Here it's second down seven from the 26. Second down and long, and 
all night long, the Pirates have been putting themselves in a difficult situation because they really haven't been moving the ball on first down. It's complete to the 22-yard line, uh, to number 22, Ricky Nichols, out there to about the 37-yard line. Nelson Jones coverage, and the third down, the first down uh, attempt is made, and... Nichols is an outstanding receiver. He just played spottily last year for East Carolina, but he has a lot of talent, probably catching a lot of balls before this year is over. Out to about only a couple of yards on the first down play. Biner with the carry. Shaw with the tackle. I personally thought they'd be able to... Uh make more headway up the middle with that uh, the strong line they have up there. I'm sure they miss John Floyd. Uh, as you mentioned, he had a, an appendicitis attack. He's here, but they've got quick and long at the guards, and they're, they're excellent, and, and Mitchell's no slouch. He played a lot last year, and I thought they'd get more movement on that play because I thought North Carolina State would be more concerned about the perimeter. Second down and seven from the 42-yard line. Ingram keeping the ball. And it's going to bring up third down and short yardage. Tackle made by Benny Pingram. And now let's go back to our studios in Atlanta for the East College football highlights. Thank you, Bob. Maryland at Vanderbilt tied late in the fourth quarter. Maryland quarterback Boomer Esiason to tight end Bill Rogers. It appears he stopped, but he gets loose. He goes 43 yards for the winning touchdown. Maryland over Vanderbilt, 21-14. Now back to Bob. Five on a third down and two. It's going to be short. That was Tony Baker trying to get the first down, but number 54, Andy Hendel, the inside linebacker for the Wolf Pack, stopped him short, and it'll be fourth down short yardage. Now, if you're East Carolina trailing 16-7, what's your pleasure here? It looks as though Ed Emery is going to go for it. No, here comes the special team. Probably way too early in a ball game with 419 to go in the third quarter. That can be tempting. You've only got a yard to go, and the ball is at midfield, but if you don't get it, and you're really putting your defense in a difficult situation. Fifth punt of the night for Jeff Fultz from Hickory, North Carolina. Line drive, it's returnable. Hits on the 10, though, fielded by Don Wilson. He's tackled about the 17-yard line over here on the near sideline. First man down to make the hit. Number 59, Donald Reed. 43-yard punt and an eight-yard return. So we're in the third quarter, 3.52 remaining, 16-7. NC State is leading Eastern Carolina. We'll be back at Carter-Fenley Stadium in just a moment. Chevy Tough is taking charge. Chevy S10, the hottest-selling new size pickup in America, with available V6 power, revolutionary Instatrack four-wheel drive, and up to twice as much towing capacity as any import pickup. Taking charge with much better V6 mileage estimates than Ranger. S10 pickup, maxi cab, and blazer. Now, choose 10.9% financing or $300 cash back on new 83 S10 pickups and maxi cabs. Chevy Tough is taking charge. When an oil rig has to wait for a part, money goes down the drain. I trust Emory's same day service. Call Emory. We've earned the trust of American business. Florida, a vacationer's paradise. A retiree's dream. An international blend of people and industries. Visit the launch pad for our nation's race into space. Then travel to a magic kingdom. Explore the mysterious river of grass. And then relax in Old Key West. Discover Florida, Monday night at 8.05 Eastern Time on Superstation WTBS. Skip Carey with you from Dodger Stadium, where the Braves went down 1-2-3 in the top half of the first inning. Butler bounced to second, Royster bounced to first, Murphy bounced to short. There are two out in the Dodger half of the inning. Bill Russell is at first base. He drew a walk, and Pedro Guerrero is hitting against Craig McMurtry. No score, bottom of the first. Dodgers batting, runner at first, two out, now back to football. We'll be joining the crew out in Los Angeles for continuous updates on that Dodger game, then going to it live immediately following our telecast here tonight. But at Carter Fenley Stadium, it's NC State's ball. First down 10 from their own 17. They lead in the game 16 to 7 with 3.52 to go, third quarter. There's a shot of the trenches. Bill McIntosh 
Out to about the 17, 18 yard line. He didn't get much past the original line of scrimmage. And now here's a, a here's a, a case to where NC State, Tim, is going to, of course, try to continue dominating the time, but they're going to have to just rack up some first downs. If they get too conservative, it could be a problem. That's correct. And if you're East Carolina, what you want to do is obviously you're supposed to, your objective coming into the series is three and out. But they need some takeaways here. They need something to generate some momentum and generate some excitement in their football team. They need a big play on defense. Esposito on a second down eight over the middle. Incomplete. It was intended for McIntosh at the 25. And number 90, Larry Berry, that hard-hitting freshman linebacker, raw-boned youngster. And a third down and long now. So Esposito, who's 10 out of 20 for 108 yard, eight yards throwing, is going to be in another passing situation with third down long yardage from his own 19-yard line. wonder if East Carolina will do any blitzing or send anybody on him this time. I'm not sure. I wouldn't be surprised to see a draw here. Here comes. Uh, over on the left side of the 49, Grant was coming. They ran off the right defensive right side of NC State, but they were there too. McIntosh didn't get anything, and after that, three plays and up. Now, they're going to have to punt. Right. Sprint draw. Sprint draw, and you were right. They did come. They came with a blitz. But Reed has to look at it like this. You know, there's no sense in taking foolish chances when you're deep in your own territory. You're nine points ahead. You're, you're more than a touchdown ahead. Just don't do anything dumb to give the game back to East Carolina. What will Henry money. Williams do here? He does nothing. He's thrown for a loss for the second consecutive time on a punt. This is the man that most people fear, that great punt returner. Great coverage by NC State. Mark Franklin was the man down to make the tackle. Number 48 coming off the field. 38-yard punt and three-yard loss on the return. And I'm sure Coach Ed Emery of East Carolina would like a little more out of that. The life of a coach is difficult. Stress and anxiety. The first down 10 for East Carolina from their 40. McIntosh going over to the wing on the left. Now, excuse me, uh, Baker going to the wing on the left. And it's complete. Up there just inside NC State territory, enough for a first down. Ken Loney covering, and Tony Baker, the man who went over to the slot on the left side, is the man who caught the pass for East Carolina. I think you're going to see more of this. What they do is they get, now they've got two quick receivers on each side of the formation. Ingram obviously uh, makes an automatic, calls the play on the line of scrimmage, and goes to the weak side of the defense. And uh, they should throw that in there a few more times. First and 10 from the 49-yard line of NC State. Ingram on the option, turning it upfield. Oh, he just was a step or two away from getting the first down. He gets it to the 44-yard line before he's down, and one of the NC State players is also on the field. Don Wilson, who was shaken up on a punt return over on the near sideline earlier, went back into the ball game. He had something wrong with his left leg. Now he's back down on the field. So the number 26 for NC State injured is take a look at the East Carolina bench. Now they are looking at uh, Don Wilson. Down to 2-10 remaining in the third quarter, and NC State has a lead, 16-7. This man, Wilson, is a key player. They call him the wolf back. The strong safety is the wolf safety position in their terminology, and he's a very important player along with that man, Andy Hendel. What a story about him, Tim. Isn't he something else? I mean, as a freshman, he walked on in the spring of his freshman year as a quarterback, 188-pound quarterback, and uh, worked and worked and worked, had one of those super overachiever-type attitudes, and now he weighs a good, strong 225, and he, along with Vaughn Johnson, are the leaders on that defense. And here comes Don Wilson off the field, obviously a left knee injury. We'll give you a report on the extent of that injury as soon as we hear from the information folks with NC State. Uh, Don Wilson is a transfer from Ellsworth, Iowa Junior College. Has, uh, had 102 tackles for this team last year. Big loss to NC State secondary if he cannot return, and it certainly looks doubtful from the appearance of that move. Second down five, East Carolina trailing 16 to seven. They're at the 44 of NC State. One receiver split wide to the top of your screen. Ingram gives to the big fullback. Biner, Biner down to the 29 yard line of NC State. Ken Loney making the tackle, and East Carolina starting to churn up some yardage. 14 yard gain for Ernest Biner. 
We're going to see this again. You can just see the feet of the tailback as he stays in his place and begins to move off to the top of the screen. And you saw the line action, the offside guard pulling, creating the hole for Biner. He's got pretty nifty feet for a fullback. Same formation now. Double tight ends, one split end up to the top. First down 10 at 29. Ingram siding on the option. Has to keep it as NC State had his option man covered all the way. Ingram gets only a couple of yards as they stretch it all the way out to the far side of the football field. Some good blocking early on there, but NC State recovered and had excellent pursuit, Tim. And that's why the Wolfpack has been successful tonight. You saw Ruffin and, and Johnson and Bush all around the football, and Ingram just hasn't been able to make, a, make an effective pitch. There have just been too many people there. 107 to go, third quarter, second down eight. Same formation to this side of the field now. Ingram rolling right, looking, keeping, going for that first down. He's short by a couple of yards, gets to the 21. Needed to go just inside the 20 for the first. It's going to bring up third down, short yarding. Vaughn Johnson, number 33, NC State making the tackle. And here is a very critical play. Of course, I have a feeling that NC State, or at uh, East Carolina, at this point of the field, might go two times for it if they, if they don't get it. I don't, two. I don't think there's any question about it, Bob. They're splitting Ricky Nichols wide to the top of your screen. There's the key man of that defense, Andy Hendel, number 54 and 33, Vaughn Johnson. They're inside linebackers. Can they make a play? Slamming in there very close to the first down. I believe he got it was Tony Baker. And you saw 33 Johnson came over along with Marlon Archie to make that stop. But I think East Carolina picked up their first down. Yes, in fact, they did. The drive stays alive. Time. Just about elapsed for the third quarter, 19 seconds remaining, and NC State leading ECU 16 to 7. In LA, it's nothing, nothing after one and a half between the Braves and the Dodgers. Updates coming through the conclusion of this game, and we'll be joining the Dodgers and the Braves game immediately after our football game. Right here, a crucial drive for the Pirates. Ingram to his fullback Biner down to about the 16 or 17. Raymond Phillips. With the tackle. They ran out the time in the third quarter. The Pirates are on the move, and they need to get on the move. Only seven points so far after scoring 46 against Florida State last week. But their drive stays alive. We'll be back in just a moment here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Someday soon, you could very well have the best of everything. But you will have to begin somewhere. And the best place to begin is with the very best beer in the world. The best tasting beer wherever you go. When you think about it, why would you ever have anything else? Come to think of it, I'll have a Heineken. Start your day off right with CNN's Daybreak. I'm Ralph Wendy. And I'm Emerald Ye. Join us for the morning's first live network newscast on CNN Daybreak. As day breaks across the nation, rise to the latest news from around the world. Up to the second national weather forecast with meteorologist Gordon Barnes and action-packed sports highlights. 6 to 9 a.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Friday. So start your day off right. Watch Daybreak across the nation with CNN Daybreak. Weekday morning, CNN is the news. I shall be screamed. It's no ordinary crime. Not very nice, I'm afraid. The victims aren't ordinary women. Look in there. And he's no ordinary killer. What happens if the murderer really is a general? It's impossible. Nothing is impossible. Omar Sharif, Peter O'Toole, Night of the Generals. Sunday morning on Superstation WTBS. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Major General George Patton, U.S. Army retired. As a member of Western Goals Foundation, I'm pleased to present the documentary, No Place to Hide, The Strategy and Tactics of Terrorism. Watch this on Sunday evening, September 11th. Check your local listings. This documentary is a must toward an improved understanding of a significant threat directed against the free world. No Place to Hide, Sunday, September 11th. The fourth quarter of tonight's game is brought to you in part by Chevrolet. Chevrolet is USA 1, and USA 1 is taking charge. And by America's number one imported beer, Heineken. Just say, come to think of it, I'll have a Heineken. 
East Carolina, second down eight at the 17 of NC State. We're in the fourth and final quarter. Wolfpack leading 16-7. But the Pirates are moving. Ingram to Baker. Ten. Six-yard line is where he goes down. A first and goal from the six for East Carolina. Daryl Harris, the right side linebacker, made the tackle. And this offensive line, the heralded offensive line of East Carolina, starting to blow them off the ball a little bit, bit more effectively. Well, that was a good play for the defense they had called. They were bringing the strong safety on that particular play, and if Ingram, Ingram had tried to roll out, he would have had problems. But he handed it back to the inside of Baker, and they're, they're fighting to get into the end zone at this point. They know they have to score on this drive. Here's a pitch to Baker. Touchdown! The sophomore from High Point, North Carolina. A second effort at about the one-yard line, and he got it in. Raising a few cheers from the gold and purple crowd of East Carolina in the stands. This is the East Carolina end of the end zone, as a matter of fact. Now it's 16-13. NC State continues to lead with 14-29 to go in the fourth period, and Jeff Heath is going to go for, obviously, one. A two-point conversion wouldn't really make much difference love to see that kind of run. Just turn the corner and just slash it upfield. Not worrying about finding a hole. Just fight and get to the end zone. Now it is 16 to 14. State leading by two points. And you know what a field goal could mean with that situation. And Heath is a good one. He had a 58-yarder previously. We'll be back in a moment. It's going to be a good fourth quarter here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Stay with us. 14-29 remaining in this football game. Just half a cup. Caffeine, you know. But this is new brim decaffeinated coffee. New brim? Now there's a new rich roasted taste that really satisfies. New brim. Mmm. It tastes this rich. Fill it to the rim. Try the new rich roasted taste of brim. Chevy Top is taking charge with Chevy S10 Maxi Cab. There's never been an extended cab pickup like it before. You can't even get one in a Ford Ranger or Toyota. Taking charge of people space, Maxi Cab with available rear jump seats has behind the seat room Datsun King Cab can match. Taking charge with up to 40% more cab load space than Datsun King Cab. Now choose 10.9% financing or $300 cash back on new 83 S10 pickups and Maxi Cabs. Chevy Top is taking charge. In every Wednesday, there should be a little good news. So Monday, look for the show that's full of good news and a whole lot more. John Sterling at Dodger Stadium, and we're scoreless at the end of two innings of play. Neither team has had a hit. Bill Russell is the only base runner. He drew a walk in the first inning. McMurtry against Valenzuela, scoreless after two. Raleigh, North Carolina, 14-29 remaining in the fourth quarter. 16-14 NC State leading East Carolina. East Carolina about to kick off. Sometimes they pull the old bam-bam onside kick at weird times here. It's one of their most effective plays. Let's see if they do it. It surprised me, but it's possible. Green and Miller are back. Deep. Ball is coming down to Miller. Not much after the 15-yard line. State's in the hole, and East Carolina has just, uh, I would say, claimed a big chunk of what we call momentum here in this football game. Tackle was made by 59, Donald Reed. And our buddy Larry Berry was down there again wreaking havoc. NC State, first down 10 from their own 15-yard line, and once again, last time NC State had the ball, it was three downs and out on a very conservative running offense. Let's see if they a little wilder here. Get to Evans. And Evans is hit at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a minor gain. P.J. Jordan, number 63, the linebacker, led the charge, but there were five white jerseys over there, and P.J.'s having himself a quail of a second half of this ball game, and the Pirate defensive unit's firing up. There's the scoring drive. Eight plays, 60 yards, three minutes. 
That option was very effective. Seven runs, one pass. Seven down nine from the 16 for the Wolfpack. Esposito. It's McIntosh. Out to the 36-yard line. Their big play man, Joe McIntosh, tackled by Tyrone Johnson, number 47. McIntosh's first pass reception of the night. It was a 20-yard gain. Back just circling out of the backfield. That's what they call a circle over. One of the East Carolina linebackers had fallen down, which gave him a lot of room. First and 10, NC State. Very big play for NC State. If they'd had a third and long deep there, they could have been in big trouble. McIntosh again. That's a couple going off the left side this time. Tyrone Johnson, number 47, the linebacker over there who plays, alternates quite a bit with Mike Grant on the left inside for East Carolina making the tackle. Here's some scores. Miami leading Houston 22-7 in Tim's neighborhood, University of Miami. 26-21, Baylor leading Brigham Young. That's third quarter score. And uh, potential upset in the making with Baylor leading Brigham Young. Hurricanes are on the way back, I guess. And razzle dazzle and a gain of about three yards there. Esposito faked, faked, and then handed off. It was Hal Stevens making the tackle. And Stevens did a good job of closing that hole, coming down off the block. If he hadn't made the play, they had some room there. So now, third down three, another important conversion situation for NC State. They are four out of nine on conversions, and this one's big, right up in the middle of the football field. It's third down and a long three. Jeff Brown, the tight end, switches over to the right side. And the first down, diving high into the air goes Joe McIntosh. And a conversion is successful for NC State, and they keep the drive alive, and most importantly, they're keeping the ball away from East Carolina. And that is the major consideration here. This is a, they realize it's critical that, uh, that East Carolina offense is starting to get on track and starting to roll a little bit, and they knew that they had to maintain possession of the ball this time down the field. First down 10 at the 47-yard line of the Wolfpack. Eight on the march, leading 16-14, 11-41 to go in the game. Number two, Wall in motion to the bottom side. Esposito in trouble! It's incomplete. He tried to get the pass over here to Brothers at about the 48-yard line. I thought just for a whisper that number 48, Clint Harris, with his uh, very, very good speed, like 4-2, 4-3, is some of the times they say he's been timed in by the pro scouts. I thought he was going to come in and pick that off. He couldn't get there in time at second and ten. You hate to see that ball floating out toward the sidelines. But that's the enthusiasm of a young quarterback thinking that he can get it there on the way down. So often you see him put it in the chest of the opposition. Second down, 10. Here comes McIntosh. Oh, excellent shoestring tackle by number 99. Randy Watts, the freshman from Sanderville's, Georgia. It was a, just a, an excellent tackle. Good up field. We're going to see this. Uh, the fullback is trying to cut Watts there, and uh, he does a nice job of fending off the block, keeping the blocker off his feet and getting upfield. And he liked it, too. Third and nine from the 47. Another conversion. Five out of tens, NC State so far. This is a big one. 10.55 to go in the game. They lead by a mere two points, 16-14. Here comes a linebacker blitz. Esposito is going to be hit behind the line. They were coming from the left side, 47 Tyrone Johnson. They got back there before Esposito could release the ball. Big defensive play by East Carolina. It'll be fourth down, and there's going to have to be a turnover of the ball here to East Carolina. A good call here by Tom Throckmorton, the defensive coordinator for the Pirates. They're coming with the, you see, quarterback trying to get his feet around. Brothers was running the, the O cut again back to the weak side, the play that's been so good for him all night, but he just didn't have time to get rid of the football. Timmy Esposito. I think, they're gonna, I think they're going to mark off a penalty here for delay of game and give them the play over, which is an incredibly big play. Apparently, the official says he blew the whistle before Dead the play ball. happened. Delay on the red team. The play never started. 
Well, great, uh, great opportunity for NC State. Nobody heard it or saw it, but nevertheless, it was a five-yard penalty, and what that means, of course, is that NC State keeps possession of the ball, one of the key calls of this football game. Again, you have brothers down here into the sideline. From the 43-yard line, third down, 14. They're coming again. Esposito, he's missed by one man, scrambling, throwing on the run, incomplete. Tyrone Johnson was blitzing from the left side linebacker position, and a couple of players back there in the backfield. One was Curtis Wyatt, also the defensive right end. Now that's really interesting. They get the play over again. The Wolf Pack calls the same play they had on, and East Carolina came with the same defense they had on a play before. They just try to do it again. Obviously, that defense works against that pattern. <laughs> Fourth and 14 from the 43. Martinison with the punt. He hangs it up there well for Henry Williams. The coverage is just incredible. Five red jerseyed Wolf Pack players are down there all over Henry Williams. Nobody could return that punt, and that's for sure. 10.06 to go in this football game. The Wolf Pack leading the Pirates 16-14. We'll be back in just a moment. A crucial drive coming up for East Carolina. Oh, nice meeting you, big guy. The Red Man Reaction. Satisfaction. We are USA One. Taking charge with celebrity. No import sedan at any price can match this Chevrolet. For the room it gives you with the mileage it gives you. And Chevrolet now brings it to you at new lower prices. The five-passenger front-wheel drive celebrity with standard engine electronic fuel injection. Chevrolet's new generation sedan. Now, get low 10.9% financing on new 83 Chevy Celebrities. Offer ends September 21st. People are discovering the variety of sports news on CNN. I'm very much interested in sports. I like CNN sports very much. The Browns gave up more points than they scored last year, and they're hoping that the defense will be buoyed by the return of linebacker Clay Matthews. For millions of people, CNN is sports. And it's number one with me. That's all part of the news to me. The Atlantic Coast Conference, now in its 31st year, conducts championships for its student-athletes in 19 different sports. 11 team champions are decided in competition for the men, while eight are crowned in competition for women. The preceding message provided by the Atlantic Coast Conference. I'd like to say hi to Jim Cummings, who's a, an avid TBS fan. and He's in the hospital up in Philadelphia. We hope he gets better soon. 0-0 zero, zero for the Braves. And uh, we hear from uh, our associate director, Joan Hagel, that two are on and two are out. We just don't know which two. Ernest Biner with the first down run out to the 44-yard line. We understand it's Atlanta. And a big first down for East Carolina. We got ourselves a heck of a football game going here. They're trailing by two. He breaks it out over uh, Norm Quick and rolling up field. A lot of downfield hustle. You saw Norwood Van down there trying to... Cut down one of those defensive back backs. Biner, 75 yards, 12 carries. He's been the workhorse in the backfield for East Carolina thus far. And off to the fullback again to about the 38-yard line. Biner with his 13th carry. Nine thirty-three remaining in this ball game, and it will be second down, about six for East Carolina here. The Wolf Pack has really harnessed Kevin Ingram up to this point in time. You just got to feel like one of these plays is going to break out of there. 13 carries. He has only 57 yards. He had 124 last week. Tossing just at the right moment to Tony Baker. Baker gets close to the first down, but no cigar. Vaughn Johnson with his seventh or eighth tackle of the night. Vaughn Johnson has just been a bulwark in the middle of the NC State defensive unit. Uh, just about everywhere the ball is has been Vaughn Johnson tonight, number 33. Both he and Hendel. And they've got remarkable pursuit. I know that's one thing that Reed really stresses, and uh, so does Bata. Get to the football. Get to the football. Johnson's a senior from Moorhead, North Carolina. Third and three. Only two out of eight on conversions for, North, uh, for East Carolina. It's close. Oh, my, it's close. It is so close that Coach Ed Emery, is probably beside himself on the sideline as they unpile him here. He'll be right on the flag over there looking and probably saying a small prayer or so. 
He's not happy with the spotting of the ball, I'll bet. Let's see what they do with it. Here if come it, the change. If it's not a first down, they're never happy with the spotting of the ball. <laughs> Once again, this is a case where East Carolina might go for it on fourth if it is short. I think they have it, though. I think the coach will be happy with the spot. There. Coach Ed Emery, just for you. <laughs> Three out of nine East Carolina is on third down conversions now. There, says Coach Emery. He's a friend, by the way, of Pepper Rogers, former Georgia Tech uh, head coach who just signed a contract to coach in the USFL. And uh, Ed Emery said to say hello to Pepper Rogers tonight. He'll be moving to Memphis, Tennessee pretty soon. 16-14 the score. Wolfpack leading 8-51 to go in the ball game on the first down. Not much yardage for East Carolina. That's Tony Baker, tackled by Vaughn Johnson, number 33. Defensive play coming in. That number 90 you see there is Raymond Phillips. He and Shaw and Blackwell and Singletary and a few guys have been running plays in and out of the ball game defensively, occasionally on defense for Tony Brockmorton, the defensive coordinator. And Hicks and Blackwell and Phillips have done a fine job up front. Steady, consistent. Second and seven from the 47 for the Pirates. Ingram throwing on the run. Complete to the tight end, short of the first down. That's Norman Van with the reception. And number 26, you saw just in your picture there a moment ago to the upper left-hand corner is Don Wilson, who had the knee injury, who's back in there. Key man for NC State with over 100 tackles last year. There he is, number 26, the 6'2", 190-pound senior from Washington, D.C. He ripped off a big game in the NC State game last year. Van did. Made a catch of a 10-yard pass and bowled over three people on the way to a 40-yard game. Third down and two. East Carolina. Ingram gets it and more. That's Kevin Ingram. Down to the 21-yard line. Dwayne Green finally brought him down. Tim, you said just a few minutes ago that Ingram was due. He had 13 carries for 57 yards and then bang, 26 yards. It's just tough to keep a guy like this bottled up. You're going to see him come down the line. They fake it to the fullback to over the left side. He reverses it out, fakes up the middle, comes down, fakes the pitch here, takes it upfield. And when he gets in open field, look at that foot quickness. He's just a hard guy to bring down. That's a great effort to get him down when they did. First and 10 Pirates at the 21-yard line of NC State. 8.07 to go. And off over the right, between the right guard and tackle to near the 16-yard line. That was Biner with the carry, Hicks with the tackle. Biner now getting up close to 100 yards. Biner has 85 yards. Ingram, 83. Most of this has been on the ground. They've, they haven't had near the mixture that the Wolf Pack has had. Uh, they threw a nice little one out to the van a couple of plays ago. But they've been staying on the ground. They've been rolling it in behind those big guys. Long and Dumas and Mitchell and Quick and Robertson. Oh, does this man want this victory? Ed Emery. He's been talking about it all week long. How key he thinks it is for the national recognition he hopes his East Carolina Pirates can get and feels they deserve as he tries to build a major college football program at East Carolina in Greenville, North Carolina. We'll be back in a moment to Raleigh, North Carolina. Piedmont Airlines Take the Family Fairs are back, and all you have to do is buy a full fare adult ticket. When you do, your spouse can go along for as little as $39 each way, and so can your kids, ages 2 through 17. Just $39 each to most Piedmont cities, $49 to Florida, $59 to Colorado or Texas. There are almost no restrictions, but you must complete your travel by October 31st. So call today, and let Piedmont save your family some seats. Wednesday, join us for a tribute to Grace Kelly, beginning with The Country Girl on the TBS Morning Movie. I don't like strong women, Mrs. Elgin. I'm not here to audition for you, Mr. Dodd. Grace Kelly, in her Academy Award-winning performance, stars with William Holden and Bing Crosby in The Country Girl. Then, on Wednesday afternoon, our tribute continues with Grace Kelly and William Holden in The Bridges at Toko Ree. A tribute to Grace Kelly, Wednesday, on the TBS Daytime Movies. concerned with the noise his pirates are right in front of the East Carolina cheering section second and five from the 16 of NC State down to the 10 and a first down for East Carolina that's Reggie Branch the backup fullback Ernest Biner had to come out for equipment repair but Reggie Branch did a nice job number 32 got the first down 
Okay, now you're the defensive coordinator of the Wolf Pack. You got to call something that to make something happen. You've got to you've got to come with the blitz. And I don't know if he's going to come from the strong side or if he'll come with one of the corners. But he has got to create some confusion and to break the rhythm that's been established here. Remember, it's a two-point game. 16-14 Wolf Pack. 7:20 to go. Here is Walden at the 10, at the five, and out of bounds. Ricky Walden to the five. It'll be second down and goal from the five. Ken Loney's been doing a nice job all night long. It's a little fella coming up from his corner position. You'll see him enter, enter the picture at the top of your screen. Good containment. Nice, who is that, Biner. Biner. Nice block by Biner. It gets it around to the outside before the pursuit can get there and picks up some valuable yardage. Nine runs in a row here for East Carolina. Second and goal from the five. They trail by two, 16-14, fourth quarter. There's the fullback, Biner, touchdown! The Pirates of East Carolina have taken the lead late in this ball game. 7-10 remaining. It'll be 20-16. No more needs to be said about the joy in East Carolina land. There's a couple of players injured on that play. Norm Quick is down for the Pirates. And this is just power. Quick comes and makes a trap on the left side. Mitchell and Long blowing it out, and Dumas blowing it out on the strong side, and it's a good job of running there. Ed, do you want this touchdown? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ed Emery. Oh, yes, he does. And unfortunately, that's number 51, Norman Quick, the right guard, who is down there. Very important player in the offensive scheme for East Carolina here. I'm sure Norman, of course, nobody wants to get injured, but I'm sure when they, it helps a little knowing it was a successful offensive play. Hope that young man's all right. And now we have a 20 to 16 lead East Carolina. And that's Tom Bata there. He's the defensive coordinator for his, for the Wolf Pack. And his defense has lost a little bit of the momentum that they had uh, carried through the first half. Looks like uh, Norman Quick's going to be all right. Good news for him. And East Carolina. And the point after attempt coming up here by Heath. It's 20 to 16, a four point. This will make it a five point lead if he hits this point after conversion. East Carolina Pirates, you see their flag be <laughs> waved and the pirate flag in the back. It's a mean, lean bunch that comes over from Greenville here to Raleigh. They get every ticket they can get. There are people everywhere here in Carter Fenny Stadium. I mean, there are people. Uh, up in the bushes on the north end, all over the bank on the south end of the stadium, hanging out of the rafters. They had to finally cut off the extra ticket sales at 57,700. Largest crowd ever to witness a football game in North Carolina state history, in the state history of the state. And uh, it eclipsed a record between North Carolina and Duke that was set back in 49. So this large crowd getting their money worth tonight, 7-10 remaining. It seemed like some... Somewhere along the beginning of the fourth quarter, they just, you're going to have the big play from Ingram. He's going to break it loose. But they've seen, they made a decision to start running right at him. Uh, uh, maybe they forgot to read the newspapers for a while and forgot how much bigger they were than North Carolina State. And it's a hot, muggy night here in Raleigh. And I'm sure those, uh, those Wolf Packers, even though Tom, Tom Reed is a tough disciplinarian and works his football team hard, you got to be getting a little bit worn down. And when you're going up against the third strongest man in the world, after a while it's going to take its toll. Tim talking about left guard Terry Long, who's also the North Carolina State powerlifting champion, the 280-pound left guard. Uh, Tim Dumas, a freshman over at left tackle, 6'6", 295. The right guard, Norman Quicks, 260. The right tackle, John Robertson's 260. That's the kind of, we're talking, they're going for two. The point after kicker came off the field. This is Ingram rolling. He's got nothing but open space. Two-point conversion, 22 to 16. That means two field goals would only tie, is about all I can tell you. <laughs> we'll be back in a moment. Chevy Tough is taking charge. Chevy S10, the hottest selling new size pickup in America, with available V6 power, revolutionary Instatrack four wheel drive, and up to twice as much towing capacity as any import pickup. Taking charge with much better V6 mileage estimates than Ranger. 
His 10 pickup maxi cab and blazer. Now, choose 10.9% financing or $300 cash back on new 83 S10 pickups and maxi cabs. Chevy Tough is taking charge. Someday soon, you could very well have the best of everything. But you will have to begin somewhere. And the best place to begin is with the very best beer in the world. The best tasting beer wherever you go. When you think about it, why would you ever have anything else? Come to think of it, I'll have a Heineken. Skip Carey from Dodger Stadium. It's a strike to Terry Harper and a nothing nothing game with two out in the top of the fourth. That's all we have time for. Back to football. Skip, one of the nation's largest football fans. Thank you very much, Skip Carey. The SS Carey, 17 straight running plays by East Carolina. They passed about two, two months ago. And, uh, since then, in the last two drives, 17 straight running plays for East Carolina. So that's option I and their offensive line just powerfully grinding out yardage here. Here's the kickoff. East Carolina leading 22-16, and Dwayne Green brings it out. He breaks it. Only to the 26-yard line. He was hemmed in at about the 15, but popped it through there and got a few more. And NC State now has a lot of time. A lot of time. Remember, though, NC State only has one timeout remaining in this game. Seven minutes remain. Here's Dwayne Green from two yards deep. This is a well-formed kick return. They get the wall set up. And watch who makes the initial hit here. It's the kicker. Good job, Jeff Heath. Way to get your nose dirty. That's good. Jeff Heath, by the way, is a former field football player, Tim. He played fullback some, and, uh, and so he's uh, not just a kicker. <laughs> McIntosh getting three or four tough yards inside on the first and ten from the 26. He gets it out to about the 33. P.J. Jordan, the inside linebacker, with his eighth tackle of the night. I didn't mean to <laughs> say he was just a kicker, Robert. I'm not trying to mean the position. See, I have a son who's a soccer player, you know, and I always... I I, I, he's a pretty boy like you, huh? <laughs> That's right. Just goes for the big bucks and the finesse kind of sport. On a second and four from the 33. McIntosh with a first down after the 45-yard line. Speaking of finesse, Joe McIntosh, what a night he is having. His 18th carry, he has about 150 yards on the night. One, exactly 151 yards for Joe McIntosh, number 43. What a player. Puts a move on Jordan there, and he's scooting downfield. Glenn Harris made the tackle the strong, the free safety for East Carolina. 6.07 remaining, first down 10. Wolfpack, they trail 22 to 16. Ball in motion. First time the Wolfpack's been behind since early in the football game. Here's Mike Miller, the other tailback. He gets about five or six. North Carolina State's Tom Reed said, you can run the ball, we can run the ball. And he has plenty of time. Clock down to 544. And I do think there, there's a potential uh, timeout situation that could be crucial. You'll see there the second row up from the bottom on the scoreboard on the left side. One timeout remaining for NC State, two for East Carolina. This will be second down, about four yards for Esposito and his Wolfpack. And off to the fullback. That's Vince Evans. He gets the first down and more to the 38 yard line. East Carolina. And I, I remember, Tim, the, the practice last night here at Carter Finney Stadium out in the middle of the field after the Wolfpack had finished, and Tom Reed was speaking to his players in the middle of the field about this exact moment in this football game. How about the fourth quarter, and he talks about how football games are won and lost in the fourth quarter, and it's just a matter of reaching down. And I mean, I was listening to him, I was ready, I was ready to go. 458 to go. First down 10 from the 38 for Wolfpack. It was 91 degrees when we started this game tonight. There's McIntosh diving to the 31. Penalty marker down. Now that's effort. Diving for another yard outside the 30. Now 
I think they may call delay of game before the snap, but for some reason or other, if that is the case, there'll be the second time that NC State and East Carolina have not heard the whistle. I don't know exactly what the situation is, but be ashamed to see somebody injured on a dead ball play. Dead ball, delay of game, five yards, red. That's a big penalty, too. It'll make it first and 15. They move it out here to the 43-yard line. I'm sure there's some people at home wondering how you could take too much time in this situation. I think Esposito's making some adjustments at the line, and it's just taking a little bit of time. McIntosh avoided one tackle, but excellent pursuit by East Carolina. No gain at all for McIntosh as he tried the left side. And P.J. Jordan, number 63, that right linebacker, now has been in on nine tackles. That young man there has... 19 times he's been running into this tough East Carolina defensive unit tonight. Well, Mike Grant knifed through and kind of broke up the timing on the play. And as we've said a couple of times tonight, he's the emotional leader of that football team, one of the captains. Second and 13 from the 43 of East Carolina. Esposito to throw the ball. Wants to go downfield, does. He's looking for Wall, overthrows everybody. It's incomplete. Kelvin Walker, number 37, the left cornerback, was diving for it. A great, not, not a bad call, possibly, Tim. A great play to have on. The middle of the field was open. The Pirates were in a blitz. They had man-to-man -man coverage, and that's when you you want to attack the uh, the middle of the field. They were vulnerable there. As a wide receiver, you want to flatten that pattern out a little bit more, though. It'll be third down, 13 for the Wolf Pack. Very big third down conversion situation. North Carolina State is five out of 11 on third down conversion start. But this is third and 13 from the 43 of East Carolina. They're coming on Esposito. He still gets it away. Number 43, McIntosh, gets the first down. I would venture to say there, Bob, that somebody blew a coverage. That was Mike Miller, by the way, 42, the other tailback who caught the pass. There's a linebacker coming. There's a linebacker coming clean from the weak side. And it looks as though it might have been his responsibility to co cover Miller coming out of the backfield. Well, he got the first down, down to the 27-yard line of East Carolina. 3.41 to go in the game now. But I'm clock ticking. Sorry. Sorry for interrupting. But obviously somebody made a, a mental error there. Esposito on the fake, throwing over the middle. Has a man at the end zone. It's wall incomplete in the end zone. Ricky Wall leaping and diving. You had mentioned earlier, Tim, that you're going to see with all those quick handoffs and the success of their tailbacks running the ball tonight that Esposito might do that. Good play call, just slightly overthrew his receiver. Good coverage, though, in East Carolina. They had three men back there with him. Yeah, they did, but guess what? They he, almost had he, three He men. was behind all of them. Yes, he was. 3.30 to go in the game. Second down, 10 Wolf Pack. The score, East Carolina University 22. North Carolina State 16. Largest crowd in the history of the state of North Carolina to ever witness a football game here. They're coming again. They missed the tackle on Mike Miller. Mike Miller gets to about the 24-yard line. It'll bring up now a third down and medium distance. Uh, let's call it about five. And you see that clock ticking all too fast for Tom Reed's North Carolina State Wolfpack and all too slowly for Ed Emery, you see on the sideline. Ed came in with his dapper jacket on, and he's getting down to his shirt sleeve and his fighting clothes on here. Four down territory. Another crucial third down situation. Esposito to Mike Miller. Mike Miller. Fumble. Fumbles the ball. Who's got it? East Carolina's recovered it, I believe. It is Clint Harris, number 48. Last year's honorable mention, All-American free safety for the Pirates, who came into this game with a slight concussion, but played anyway. And late in the game, he makes an incredibly big fumble recovery at the 10-yard line, stopping the Wolf Pack drive. There was no question that NC State had it going. Finds a hold. Great job. Great job up front there. And the ball pops out. There's Reed, and he's got to be disappointed. His folks are fighting. And they reached down and took that ball down the field the hard way. And uh, I know he's a disappointed fellow right now, but we got 2.45 left, brother. 
going to be announcing our most valuable players, the Chevrolet most valuable player coming up here pretty soon. And there's Tony Baker running on the left side for East Carolina on a first and 10 from the 10. Gets out to about the 13. 236, 235, and the clock going down. East Carolina leading 22 to 16. Now, the situation is this. East Carolina has two timeouts remaining. They hope to maintain possession of the ball and not use them. And NC State has one timeout remaining. They trail by six points. 218, 217 in count. Second and six, Pirates. To their fullback. That's Biner. That ball popped loose. NC State has recovered at the 18-yard line. With the ball for North Carolina State is Frank Bush, the left outside linebacker. Number 38, I think, got the football for North Carolina State. Unbelievable. Trying to run a trap back to the short side of the formation. And it seemed like the, the ball never, he never really had the ball, it looked like. Man, Wolfpack is all over that loose ball. Ed Emery is what you call a bit upset. He had only to run off the clock. Now, 2.09 to go. And there's the man, Frank Bush, number 38, a junior from Athens, Georgia, with a fumble recovery. Now for an update on the Braves-Dodgers game, let's switch to our studio in Atlanta. John Sterling at Dodger Stadium and Los Angeles with the first big threat of the game. They have first and third two out and rookie center fielder R.J. Reynolds up. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. Braves and Dodgers scoreless. Right now, the rookie center fielder R.J. Reynolds with a count of 1-0. and oh. McMurtry on the mound has given up two hits. The only two hits of the ball game. Jack Fimple had a single in the second inning and here Guerrero had a single. And back of a walk by Baker. Two outs, first and third. And this line drive to center field is caught by Butler. Butler made. They drop the ball and a run scores. So in the bottom of the fourth, it is 1 0 Los Angeles. That's a report from the West Coast back here in Raleigh, North Carolina. We have 2.09 remaining in this game, and what a heart throbber we have. It's first and 10 Wolfpack at the 19-yard line, just inside the 19, of East Carolina. The Pirates lead by 6, 22-16. We couldn't have had a stage set for a more dramatic closing to this football game. See what the Wolfpack can do. They've got to score the touchdown. Esposito got time to throw. They're after him now. He throws it, and it is complete to his tight end, number 45, Jeff Brown, who gets to the 14-yard line, clock to 157, and it continues to count, and NC State has one timeout remaining. He drops back, looks to his left. He runs McIntosh. He's running right into the camera. He's trying to run McIntosh, circle him upfield, and get him in the corner of the end zone. But the Pirates do a nice job of coverage, and finally, Brown just comes off the block, and Esposito hits him with the football. Second down six, NC State at the 15-yard line of East Carolina. Esposito hands it off to the tailback, McIntosh. Excellent play made there at right at the 15-yard line by number 49, Mike Grant, the left linebacker. It'll be third down four from about the 13-and-a-half-yard line. Remember, NC State doesn't need any kind of field goal. They tra trail here by six, and there's a minute and six and five and four and counting remaining in the game. Wall splits wide to the top of your screen. There you see the clock. Big third down play here for the Wolfpack. They give to Vince Evans. He does not get the first down. He's down to about the 11. But obviously, the Wolfpack will go for the first down. 42, 41, and 40 and counting. 39, 38, and now Chris Cook, one of the flankers, comes in with a play from the sideline. Clock down to 32, 31, 30. It is East Carolina leading by six points. Tom Reed on the sideline now says, let's use our last timeout. I don't know that the players heard him. I don't think they did. The clock running, 19, 
18 and 17. He's it's a fourth to... down, and finally Esposito turns around to the official and says he cannot hear. There are about 12 to 15,000 fans jammed on a hillside here at the south end of Carter Finney Stadium, and I'm sure the noise must be deafening. Clock stops at 15. That was an official timeout. Thus far, it was an official timeout. Let's see. They haven't charged it to uh, NC State yet. But Tom Reed just sent in a play. Sent it in with Ricky Wall. He was trying to call timeout. Timeout got called, and I do not know who it was charged to. Well, that, that's a little unusual. It certainly wasn't called to State. Now we're back to it. Fourth down and one at the 10. Six point difference in this ball game. Wolfpack trailing East Carolina. Esposito wants to option it himself. He does to his fullback thrown for a loss at the 16 yard line. Just look at the East Carolina defensive unit. Number five Adams was the man who was there and on the far sideline. A celebration on the field by East Carolina. They can be penalized for this and probably will be. But it's East Carolina's ball. They don't care at this moment. Nine seconds remains in the game. East Carolina now has to just run out the clock. According to our official scoreboard here, there is one timeout remaining for NC State's Wolfpack. The penalty markers on the field, I'm sure, are for delay of the game and the the East Carolina celebration on the sideline. Time to name our Chevy MVPs. Our most valuable player from East Carolina University, fullback Ernest Biner, who is the senior from Milledgeville, Georgia. Ernest Biner had himself quite a night. 90 yards in 15 carries, including a very important touchdown. And Vaughn Johnson, the inside linebacker with eight tackles and a dominating force on defense tonight for NC State. Ed Emery, you see him on the sideline, and of course Tom Reed on the near side, the head coach of NC State, was uh, having his debut game. Of course he wanted the victory, but in no way, I don't think in terms of the, the tradition, could he have had the history of wanting this win as badly as Ed Emery did, an East Carolina graduate. He's been there three years trying to build a national program and just look at the joy in that man's eyes. If he can hold on for nine more seconds, he has never defeated NC State in 77. He was not the coach at East Carolina. I'm not so sure after the last possession that he is relaxing yet. You know, they, they put it on the ground a minute ago. And Reed has got nobody ever, I don't care what you say, no one ever feels good if you end up the game with less points than the other team. But this guy here has got to be, he's got to be proud of the way his people fought back within an eyelash of taking it in for what would have been a tying touchdown and potentially winning point after, but a fumble and a recovery by Bush of East Carolina. And now with nine seconds left, the Pirates fall on the ball. The fans are about to run onto the field here. It's down to two to one, and that's the end of the football game. And East Carolina has defeated NC State. It was last week, a 46 to 47 loss at Florida State. But Ed Emery said, we will come to Raleigh. We will defeat NC State. It will be the biggest game in our young history. And he is a victorious head coach tonight, 22 to 16, over the Wolf Pack of North Carolina State. Tim Foley, what a game it was. It's fantastic. The final score from Raleigh as you see the Pirates celebrate is East Carolina 22, North Carolina State Wolf Pack 16. Be sure to join us next week as we head to College Park, Maryland for the duel of the great quarterbacks, Boomer Esiason and Jeff Hostetler as the Mountaineers of West Virginia meet the Terrapins of Maryland. Tonight's game has been brought to you by Chevrolet. Chevrolet is USA 1 and USA 1 is taking charge. And by Cable News Network and CNN Headline News. Now you have a choice in 24-hour television news. The East Carolina fans continue to celebrate. It'll be a long time before they leave this stadium tonight. East Carolina is located just 85 miles from here. We're going to go now to the Dodger Braves game in Los Angeles, California. This is the Superstation WTBS Atlanta. Okay, Bob Neal, thank you very much. Skip Carey, John.